Hey, welcome back to Magic Ball Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, we have a new deck die for you in the standard format. This is a Wayland Fast Advance deck called Hanging Gardens. But very specifically, I put this deck together as hopefully a very approachable entry point into the standard format. So while there are timestamps in the description below, if you want to jump straight into the gameplay, we're going to take a couple minutes here going over this deck, explaining its game plan, but specifically trying to make this thing as approachable as possible for someone who maybe hasn't played the standard format just yet. Now, one thing I do have to say that specifically on the day that we recorded the gameplay for this video, we played eight matches. All eight matches were against Anarchs. I think we played against three Hoshiko decks and then the rest, we just kept playing against Essa over and over again. Now, Essa right now is getting more and more play in competitive formats. Uh, Essa is actually converting pretty well competitively. So we're going to spend a bit of time at the end of this deck dive instruction part to talk about how we play around Essa and kind of the sort of strategies that generally work out more often than not. But otherwise, this is Hanging Gardens, our standard list. We are firstly playing as an ID, Wayland Consortium built the last. Firstly, nothing too much to say about this identity. We're playing a 44 card deck. We have that smaller deck size, which is generally something pretty appreciated. And we get some extra credits when we advance our cards. You now, in this deck, this will either be your agendas, getting some free money on the go is pretty great, or sometimes we will be advancing our ice. Now, this ability isn't going to blow you away. It's not the most notable thing in this deck, and you could probably play other Wayland abilities, but we're picking this one because it is simple and straightforward, and the deck size is nice and consistent, which is great. So what our game plan here is we're a fast advance deck. What we want to do is we want to score a couple points in the early game behind some ice, uh, rush some points out. And once we get to three points, maybe to four points, we want to spend the rest of the game fast advancing. So basically scoring agenda straight from hand. And we have two big tricks in this deck to do that with. Firstly, we're playing a full set of trick of lights. This is a card that you might be familiar with in this startup format. For one click, we can move two advancements from an advanced card to another card. So in short, we install a 3-2 agenda, we advance it once, getting money with built to last, and then pick an ice that has two advance encounters on them and just slide them over to our agenda, score them out right then and there. Now, we're going to get some advancements for free in this deck, so this becomes not too difficult of a cost and allows us to cheat out a bunch of those 3-2 agendas a bit faster under the noses of the runners. We also are playing, this is a standard only card, this is Audacity, and it's a very powerful card. It's a Wayland card that allows you to put two advancements on a card as long as you have at least three cards in HQ, including this one, but it also forces you to trash your entire HQ. Now that's quite an impressive cost, but largely doesn't matter when you play this when you're already on five points to score at your last two points from hand. This is such a big card in the standard format. You see this outside of Wayland, it is that powerful. And the idea is that a lot of runners understand is that when a Wayland deck is on five points, they're basically going to be on seven points the next turn. If they're usually playing one, sometimes two copies of Audacity, just install a three, two, advance it once for a credit, let alone we get money and then Audacity will close the game. So as soon as you can get to that game point, you'll realize runners have to be pretty aggressive because they understand Wayland decks can close the game out pretty fast. Now our agenda suite works really well with this fast advance plan. In terms of it, we're playing nine agendas. Two of them are hostile takeovers. Not much has to be said about this thing. You've probably played this one before. Install advance advance is something that this ability does for free. So we gain seven credits and trade that for a bad publicity. Now, one agenda point is actually really important. If we're just scoring out three, two agendas to get the seven, that hostile takeover means that we can do that by scoring only three other agendas. So in most matches, you want to score out a single hostile takeover. Now, the second hostile takeover, if you draw it, you might actually not be excited to score it because taking you to two points or to four points, whatever you're at, it doesn't really help you get closer to seven points. A lot of times, unless you score up the five, three in the deck, uh, the second hostile doesn't really help you. So maybe it's something you want to score just so the runner can't steal it because it does help them win the game. But otherwise, you definitely in every game largely want to get one hostile scored. Bad publicity is a big cost, but if we're trying to win the game by turn 10 or turn 13, that actually doesn't add up as bad as if you go the distance and play a longer deck. We're trying to win the game quit pretty quickly. Otherwise, the majority of the deck cards we're playing are three, two agendas. We got above the law. We have IZF protocol. You got to watch out. If the runner has one card in hand. You can just fast advance for lethal as much as this is not a card you're excited to score early. And very importantly, we have project atlases. Well, this is a three, two agenda and you will score it out to get yourself to five points or get it to score to seven points. You do really want to go out of your way to, especially in the early game, get one advancement counter on this or two advancement counters extra over that 3-2 limit to get you that Project Atlas ability. Inherently, we're a deck that can take a two-card combo and convert that to just free points in our score area. Install Advanced Trick of Light is fantastic. So that means getting that extra Atlas counter, as it's called, is largely converting this to almost a, a four-point agenda. It makes the work a lot more easy and the deck a lot more consistent. So this, the agenda counters on this thing are worth their weight in gold. Finally, we're playing, this is our uh, standard only agenda. This is Global Food Initiative. 
We made a video on this channel about a month ago talking about the power of this card. This doesn't really have active text. We did pay an influence for this. It is a neutral card that is cost influence. Uh, but very specifically, this is only a two pointer to the runner. Now, this means that the runner cannot win on stealing fewer than four agendas, which just means that while our central servers maybe are not the most protected, we are not going to lose too quickly. And that is just worth the influence for sure. In some games, if you can score this out, you should, especially in the early game. If this gets you to three points, you can win off two fast advances. The hostiles start to be less relevant at that point. Uh, but otherwise, in the mid game, in the early game, if the runner steals this off the top of R&D for HQ, you're not too upset about it because you actually don't have a lot of intention to score this thing out. You're largely playing it just because it is an easy amount of points to fit into a deck. And those are agendas. And once again, you are going to want to score out three points, four points early in a remote server if you can. And once the runner has their breakers down, that's when we're going to transition to trying to close the game out entirely with Tricolite or Audacity. And it's actually very hard for runners to interact with that right now. One of the big ways that runners can stop fast advance besides stealing agendas and maybe trashing some fast advance pieces is classically claw. And Clot is the virus that if it's on the table, you just can't fast advance. You can't score out agendas the turn they're installed. But luckily right now, the one faction that is most consistently playing fast advance is Shaper. And currently in the standard format, Shaper just doesn't exist. I've seen so little Shaper right now modernly in my local meta on Jinteki.net. And Shaper is the one faction that can, at instant speed, produce Clot with things like Simulship and self-modifying code. So they're inherently the faction that kind of keeps in check a lot of fast advance decks. And you just don't run into it. So... You can kind of just get away with fast advancing under the noses of anarchs or criminals as long as you can go quick enough, as long as you can rush into a remote server, and that's exactly what this deck does. To go over some of the other cards, we're playing three copies of Rashida Yahim. If you haven't seen this card before, this is such an important card in the standard format. This is probably the third most common card across all corp decks behind Hedge Fund and Spin Doctor. I think Rashida has just always been there now for a couple of years she's been around. And this card, you crack it at the beginning of your turn to draw three cards and three credits. That's just a lot of value. It accelerates your game. It makes you start a turn with generally about nine cards in hand and extra credits so you can start making plays. Specifically, corporations are uh, a bit more powerful in the early game, specifically when runners don't have all their breakers yet. They're still struggling to set up their economy, find all their pieces. And firing Rashida on turn one just gives you an absolute immense amount of gas. It gives you the confidence, the card draw, the credits to be able to score behind two pieces of ice early. And this card just exists in so many decks because it just accelerates the game. It just pushes you forward. It's one of the most important cards that can be in a remote server that is not an agenda. So you play three copies of it. And even in the mid game where she's still very good, it's always nice to have things to put in a remote server so the runner has to consider running it and spend money. It's very important you keep the runner doing things that they're reacting to you. Otherwise, they're just setting up. And you generally don't win that if the game goes too long. We're running three copies of Spin Doctor. Of course we are. It's just very good. You get some recursion. That's really important for our fast advance pieces. We might lose them. We might play them. We want to play them over and over again, let alone the card draw and the shuffle effect. And then we have three copies of Wall to Wall. You're probably familiar with this if you played Startup as of last year before the rotation, but this card just does a lot. On its own, if you fire one of these abilities, that's honestly pretty good for a card. If you're just firing one of these abilities, just drawing a card, gaining a credit, placing a free advancement, that works really well with our deck. We don't have a lot of money. We want to go fast. We want to get those advancements for Trick of Light. But specifically, this deck won't have resed asset. So you're very likely to get three of these conditions to fire at the start of your turn. Now, this add this asset to HQ ability is also very unique and very interesting, which means, and mind you, you have to decide these abilities before you do your mandatory draw. But if you ever draw onto an agenda and you want your scoring server that had the wall to wall in it, you can just return this to hand, jam an agenda, and then return the wall to wall maybe a turn after. A really good ability. Free advancements are fantastic. Now, our operations. We know our fast advance pieces. We have one Audacity, three Trick of Light. We're playing three Hedge Fund because, of course, we are. It's good enough economy. We're playing one Sprint. This is the one influence slot that I think there's a lot of flexibility. We'll go over some of the options here, but this is just a bit of a card draw card and allows you to get some filtering. So there are some agendas in your early game that you don't want to score out. Things like the Global Food Initiative, the one of IZF Protocol can be kind of ugly in the early game. So this kind of ensures that you're not flooding up while also drawing into some of your, your ice you want early, some of your economy. Again, just a good filtered, powerful card. And finally, our very interesting standard card here is three copies of Priority Construction. This is by no means a popular card in standard, but I think gets a lot of uh, value in this deck. So now this card is a double, so it costs you two clicks to play and allows you to take any ice from your hand, install it on the remote server, ignoring all additional costs. So if you're adding your third, heaven forbid, your fourth ice, you get that for free. And then you get to play three advancement tokens on that card. 
Now, three advancement tokens is actually a lot of value. It costs a lot of time. It costs a lot of money to advance your eyes. So this card gives you a lot of click compression. It gives you that sort of mitosis type value where you do a lot for very few clicks. And uh, as much as it is a restrictive card, you can't ice up central servers. It does something very good for this deck, specifically a deck that wants to get, again, two advancement counters on any piece of ice. Now, the big thing that will make more sense once we dive into the ice itself is that we have so much ice in this deck that its value incredibly balloons as soon as it has at least three advancement counters. So it's a perfect combination with this card. It's something that sets up our fast advance pieces. It's something that makes our ice really, really difficult to face check into and really hard to break. And so it's just a very nice slot. As a double, it is a bit awkward sometimes. A lot of times you want to do priority construction, install an agenda behind it like an Alice, and then advance that agenda. But unfortunately, that's four clicks. So while that's still good, you might need to let your Atlas stew for a turn. Maybe you're just going to actually trickle light it while it is on the table. You're not fast advancing it. But just keep that in mind. It's a bit of a setup card. And sometimes you want to keep some ice in your hand and understanding that you might draw into priority construction and you'd rather do that to get the advancements than install an ice and then regret when you draw this kind of the turn after maybe. Very fun card. Finally, as an upgrade, we have Malaper Data Vault. This is kind of quintessentially a luxury piece. High trash cost, low res cost. You only res this when it does something. And it lets you search your deck for a card, not an agenda, when you score something out from this server. This is just fantastic for you to pull either your economy piece, a hedge fund if you really need it, but nine out of 10 times, you're gonna be pulling your next trick of light, your final audacity, whatever you need to close the game out. Score your hostels, fast advance on top of this. It just makes sure that you have the gas to keep going to close the game out very quickly. Again, we're trying to win the game by turn 10. Last part of this equation is the ice, and we're playing advanceable ice largely. On the barrier slot, we have a Ket, a cat is really nice. There's a lot of text on these cards, but I promise you they're not that intimidating. Firstly, it's an advanceable ice and it has two subroutines. The first says gain a credit, place one advancement token on an installed card, and secondly, it ends the run. This is a barrier you res for three credits. I think almost all the ice in this deck reses for cheaper than it looks because almost all of the ice has a subroutine on it that says if the runner basically runs into this without the appropriate breaker, you're going to get some money back. So on most board states in the early game, you're resing a cat for two credits because you get the refund. Place one advancement token on an installed card. That's really nice text. Inherently, this card always has a target because it can just advance itself. And we'll get to that in a second. You do want to advance this card. But heaven forbid in the early game, if they run into this, you advance an agenda in the remote server, get that scored out a bit bigger. If it's a Project Atlas, a bit faster, a bit cheaper. That's phenomenal. But that's just a nice face check on a pretty well costed end the run. But very specifically, if this card is ever triple advanced, it gets plus three strength and the runner cannot break all the subroutines on this. Which means if we priority construction this on a remote server, we have a five strength barrier that's pretty good in which the runner is always going to let us gain a credit and place another advancement on probably something else at that point. That is just a very big piece of ice. I don't think this is your best target to priority construction, but it'll definitely do in a pinch. This is a sort of ice that's good on central servers and remote servers because once it's fully advanced, it is really annoying to go through, let alone expensive for what you cost to res it. I do think in standard, there's a bunch of other options you can consider for this sort of slot. Mind you, Ice Wall is just kind of in the classic. And I do think a cat is a bit more interesting once it gets to full that three advanced encounters. And I think also Masvingo is something in standard you could consider abstractly. Masvingo does get of itself its free advancement when it's res. The subroutine doesn't need to fire and it scales not by height, but by subroutines, kind of by length, if you want to call it that. And I think both of these cards are worth looking at in a slot, but I think a cat is generally a bit more taxing. Uh, getting to three advancements is a bit more realistic and generally costs people about the same, if not more, to break than a three or four advanced Misfingo, as much as we're not going to advance this much further than that. Now, our next barrier is, in fact, not an invincible card, but very importantly, one of the most powerful cards in all of the standard format. This is Border Control. It's a wild card. It shows up in every Wayland deck as a three of, and it's probably going to be very exciting to, to learn to play this for the first time. Four credits is a bit for a barrier. It's only one strength and has two subroutines. Firstly, gain a credit for each piece of ice protecting the server. At a minimum, it will count itself. So sometimes you res this for three credits and end the run. But the important part of this ice is at an instant speed at any paid ability window, you can trash this during a run on the server the border control is on to just end the run. That's it. Just end the run. It's not a subroutine. The runner can't break it. If it's firing, they just end the run. And this is just such a powerful, such a flexible card that gives you so many options. It gives you so much defensibility uh, in Wayland. It's absolutely uh, fantastic. Firstly, this ability you can fire at any paid ability window, which means you can fire this once the runner has run through the border control and all other ice on the server. Now, this ability in a lot of ways works and uh, kind of impacts the runner's math the same way a lot of defensive upgrades do. 
The idea is that the runner runs through a remote server, breaks a whole bunch of ice, spends a lot of money, comes to a defensive upgrade that ends the run, and then they have to run back. That means that they spend twice the amount of money rerunning the remote server. The idea is that say we have two ice on a server. We have Archer, a very expensive thing to break and something else. The most expensive third ice we can put on the server for the runner is something like a border control. Cause it's not just, do they have to break the border control is now they have to run through that archer twice in a turn to make a successful run as long as you crack the border control. It multiplies the cost of running the server. You don't just add X, you multiply by X. And that's a very, very powerful ability. The ability also at instant speed to end the run works really favorably to some of the more uh, specific, some of the more bespoke attack angles runners have. Things like botulists are very powerful, but they only have so many virus counters on it. So if the runner ever installs a botulist and runs a remote server, if you crack the border control after they spent their virus counters, they probably don't have enough virus counters to run back. And that gives you a lot of options into these sort of interactions. Similarly, things like boomerang, one time use, it's not coming back, they're not getting back in. Things like inside job, very, very important. And with this deck, when we want to score out some agendas early in a very quickly, cheaply built remote server, border control can be so incredibly important against some of these very common runner tricks. And it's not just remote servers. Very importantly to know, you can put this anywhere. And a lot of times understanding the proper placement of border control is the most important thing in a lot of these matchups. Understanding that you're going to be playing against, say, an ESSA deck that wants to Chestushka you on HQ. Having not only the, the border control in HQ, but even the threat of the border control in HQ is going to change how the runner plays. As soon as the runner sees there is a border control in HQ, it's much harder for them to get a Chastushka to land. They generally need to bait you to fire the border control and then come back with either a second Chastushka in a couple turns. Maybe the same turn if they set it up really nice, but it can make it very hard to land any of these successful run triggers that require successful runs on appropriate servers because you just crack the border control after they've spent all their money playing this card, let alone running the server. It's a phenomenal card, and it's a three of in basically every Wayland list, and if you haven't played with it so far, it is wildly powerful. It is the sort of thing that runners are definitely going to play around. They're going to go out of the way to make you fire this early, so before they play any of their run events, so they can challenge the remote server in the later turns. And I think a big thing you have to remember with this card is not to pop it too early. A lot of the times in Netrunner, the later the game goes, it more often favors the runner. And so having a border control on the remote server is one of the more unfair, one of the more powerful tools you have. So sacrificing that on turn four, as opposed to needing it on turn nine to sneak out an agenda can be the difference between winning or losing a game. So you'll figure out the more you play, how soon you want to run the border control and the value of this card. But let me tell you, it's one of the most powerful and most exciting tricks in the standard format. This is generally a three of in every Wayland list. And even out of faction, you can see this card a fair bit if they want to score on remote servers. Now, jumping to code gates, we have two code gates that are kind of similar ideas. Uh, you might have seen Hordem if you play in the startup format. These are ice that once you triple advance them, they don't get higher strength. They don't become harder to break. Just the power of their subroutines increases drastically. Hordem on its own is a four strength end the run gain a credit code gate. That's not too bad. You resist for three credits on the refund on the early game. But once it's triple advanced, firstly, the runner can't get through it with an AI, which is a niche benefit, but it does happen. And specifically, the subroutines on this just become super powered. You gain four credits instead of one, and then you get to search R&D for two cards, add them to HQ, and then end the run instead of just an end the run. And the weird, awkward thing about Hordem is that it doesn't get harder to break the later the game goes on, barring the AI clause. So this is the sort of thing where if the subroutines are ever going to fire, they have to fire exclusively in the early game. And that's one of the good things about priority construction and playing a very fast jammy deck on the remote server is that it's the most likely uh, environment where the runner might have to face check into this awkwardly and you get this really powerful ability, get to pull an agenda and a fast advance piece from your deck and you're set up to go from there. So not a card that gets stronger throughout the game. So you generally don't feel bad taking the advancements off of this for Trick of Light because the runner has to break at least one of these subroutines anyways to get through it in the mid to late game regardless. Now, Mouseless is slightly different because this card is almost impossible to break easily. Uh, just about no runner deals with this. It's five strength and has three subroutines. The subroutines are annoying enough, but they're not very important for our game plan. Firstly, we gain a credit. That's always nice. Again, res for three in the early game. We do one net damage that doesn't exactly have synergy with our deck, but it's definitely an annoying thing. And we also give the runner a tag. Again, we have no tag punishment, not that the runner knows that, but more importantly, the runner, if they have resources, probably wants to clear the tag. So that's a nice little face check there. Now, when this one gets triple advanced, again, all that changes in this one is the subroutines get more powerful. It's now three credits, it's now three net damage, and now it's not only a tag, but a tag and end the run. When this is triple advanced, and mind you, we largely can't afford to do that. You'll see in the upcoming games, I don't generally advance my ice to three. We get that either for free with priority construction or for free enough with wall to wall. Uh, this becomes such a disastrously difficult face check. If you have a triple advanced ice on the remote server in the early game, 
It's really hard for the runner to run into that without having a decoder. And even once they have the decoder, the math on this thing is ridiculous. A lot of times, Runners will only break a couple of the subroutines on this thing, either with like a boomerang, for instance, or they'll just break the bottom two, let you have a credit because it lines up well with certain breakers. And triple advancing that makes it a bit awkward when the top subroutine just gets a bit more powerful. But a triple advanced Fordham is technically one of the best ice in the entire format, as much as advancing things is really expensive. So luckily we don't have to do that manually. We'll hopefully get that for free. This is the most taxing piece of ice in our deck, especially once it's fully advanced. I do want to take a second here, just as a little tangent, because we're playing exclusively against Anarchs, just to mention the Anarch Breakers. These are the Heat Breakers, the Bin Breakers. We don't really shout them out. We show a lot of cards throughout the games that are standard only cards. These we're going to leave for this section. Now, these are breakers that runners can install if they're in the heap when you encounter the corresponding kind of ice that they break. Paperclip is the most notable one because it's the best fracture largely in an entire standard format, has been for years. And again, the text here, whenever you encounter a barrier, you may install this program for you from your heap. That's just a ridiculously good text. The idea is that Anarchs don't have to in go out of their way and spend time and spend credits installing breakers until exactly when they need them, if they need them, and also they don't spend any clicks doing that. So, so they save a fair bit of time and money throughout the game, which they can spend doing other stuff, overdrawing, discarding this, taking net damage, and not worrying that they lose their breakers. There's so much value to this, let alone Paperclip is very good. So we have Paperclip that deals with barriers. This is the one that you're more likely to see out of faction. And then there's also Black Orchestra, which deals with code gates. And we have MK Ultra that deals with sentries. This is something that you'll be very familiar with as soon as you start to play standard, because every Anarch deck runs all of these. And it's worth noting, while Paperclip is so very good and efficient, Black Orchestra and MK Ultra are a fair bit more awkward. Black Orchestra and MK Ultra break nothing for less than three credits. And as soon as you play something that's about four to five strength or has two to three subroutines, they're generally paying about six credits, which is kind of ugly. That's kind of where things like Mouseless line up really nice. This breaks Mouseless for six credits, and even then, it doesn't break all the subroutines. Considering the way interface works, you don't break the subroutines if you haven't matched strength already. So again, anything with an odd amount of subroutines lines up really well, and that's definitely worth keeping in mind. It has a huge impact on how Anarchs play across the standard format, at least for the next couple months. Our last piece of ice in the deck is just a Veritas. Um, yeah, the mid-range to low sentry kind of slot in most Wayland decks is pretty ugly right now. There's not that much that makes a lot of sense. Veritas is a standard only card. It has a lot of subroutines, so it's kind of ugly for that MK Ultra to get through it. Uh, this is a bit more complicated than it probably needs to be, and it's just something that's annoying enough, it's taxing enough that maybe the runner wants to go find their killer before they're hitting central servers, mind you. We almost never put this on a remote server. I think if you want to keep it simple, you can just probably pay a tithe. We don't care about the net damage, but it's just annoying enough, and the runner probably has to find a breaker anyways. But yeah, Veritas is just tithe, but a bit more complicated. It's still fine. And that's this list. And again, that is our game plan. Our entire game plan here is get some early agendas behind some of the strongest ice in the game as fast as possible. Score at the hostel, score at an Atlas and a remote server, score on an early global food initiative if you can. And then the rest of the game, all you're trying to do is trickle light and audacity to score out a couple more points from hand. It's admittedly a pretty focused game plan. We're not like a Wayland deck that has alternate win conditions with tags and meat damage. Not that your opponent knows that. Now, admittedly, our opponent doesn't know what's not in the deck. So to some extent, they still have to play a bit cautiously. A lot of Wayland decks are running some amount of tag punishment, hard hitting news, stuff like that. So we're going to use that to our advantage, but it is pretty straightforward. Just get some points, score them out very quickly. Now here, real quick, just address some cards that could have been in the deck, but we decided not to. I think NGO Front is another really popular card in the standard format that gets even better in Built to Last where we advance this for more credits. Now, I'm not really big on trading our whole turn for just some money in this deck. We generally want to go a bit faster and kind of push the agenda issue. If you find yourself needing a bit more money, this is definitely one way to do it. Also, a Dudedois, just a fun card in the standard format. This massive, unique card gives you more advancements the longer the game goes on. Whenever the runner encounters this, it kind of spirals out of control. Now, from my finding, seven credits is a lot for a piece of ice, and a card like this only gets better the longer the game goes, so its ability uh, becomes more and more relevant. And our ice only scales to a certain point. Once it hits three advancements, it doesn't get better, so we don't really need the effect. We're trying to close the game a fair bit faster than this thing will pay out. Finally, that last influence slot we talked about, there's so many ways you can do, kind of season to taste. If you're running into a lot of Anarchs, a lot of Botulus, Magnet, perfectly fine. And end the run code gate to jam behind safe against Botulus is phenomenal. Mavirus as a way to deal with clot. If there is that clot in your meta, if there are too many viruses, you don't like to purge out. Amakua, mind you, is a thing in standard. Uh, this is another nice slot. And I think predictive planogram is also quite reasonable. 
It doesn't give you the filtering of Sprint, but it gives you that card draw or the credits, whatever you need at the moment. And this deck isn't too rich. It's just kind of rich enough. It can barely get by in some cases. So just getting a bit more money in there is probably not the worst thing. I also think you might want to look at things like Crazium Grid. This exists in the standard and startup format, and it's just something you can play, maybe instead of the Malapert, to stick on a central server to stop those runs from being considered successful, which is just kind of a powerful thing. If you're running into a lot of Chistushkas, playing a lot of Asa, that can help a heck of a lot. Now, I do have to say, regrettably, there are going to be a couple matches. I think the first two matches coming up, I'm playing a slightly different deck. This is where I started building this list uh, last week. I'm playing a version of this deck, exact same game plan, except we were playing Anson Rose. Anson Rose is a bit of a weird executive from older Netrunner. Uh, this card was never very popular, never very good, but we played some old decks like this back in the day and I wanted to revisit it. This card is just miles worse than wall to wall. Yeah, it's like way worse than wall to wall that I don't think this makes any sense. And the ice suite that we played, it would be a bit different. We're playing some of this ice that scales up better with more advancements because we we're excited to get more advancements with Anson Rose, but none of this made sense. Mind you, you could play Colossus, but it's very expensive and trashing a program is not that relevant to our game plan. So this is where we ended up. And again, I think it's streamlined. I think it's a really easy way to play with some of the powerful cards in standard and have a focused game plan, focus on your fundamentals and score out some points. Now there are timestamps in the description bar if you just want to jump straight to the gameplay, but I mentioned this before that on the day that we recorded gameplay for this deck, we played against exclusively Anarchs all day. We played against a bit of Hashiko, but most of it was Essa. Now, I have received feedback over the last couple of weeks from players who are struggling to deal with the sabotage mechanic from Essa in general, and I thought we could take just a couple of minutes to talk about how this deck or how in general we can deal with sabotage, because I think the Essa decks right now are actually pretty good. We're going to see more of them, I think, going forward. We've seen a couple really powerful lists published recently on NetrunnerDB, mind you, links in the description, and these lists are going on to actually be winning events, and I think we're going to see Essa win a couple more events through this uh, circuit opener season this summer. So if you're not the biggest fan of Sabotage, apologies, I do think you're going to see a bit more of it going forward. But I don't think it's too bad. While I think Essa's or Sabotage specifically can seem a bit frustrating, there's still a lot of things that we can do that can help elevate our win rate against these sort of decks. So I thought we could take this time to talk about some very basic tips to help elevate your game against some Sabotage decks. Now, firstly, and I have to admit this is a pretty generic tip that largely works against most runners always, is that it really helps to have a proactive game plan. If your deck is not running as a well-oiled machine, if you don't exactly know what you're doing and you find yourself spending turns just clicking for credits, just drawing cards and not forwarding the game plan, not forcing the runner to interact with you, not to worry about the sort of stuff you're putting in a remote server, that's not very good for you. That means the game is probably gonna go long. If you're not producing problems the runner feels like they have to deal with, that means that this Essa deck can continue to set up, can draw cards, can find that event economy that's based off of and get its sabotage pieces together. Again, that's why cards like Rashidi Ahim are so important. Not only does it give you the acceleration to push the next couple of turns very aggressively, but it's the sort of thing you put in a remote server and then the Essa deck has to consider, oh, I have to check that. I can't just set up my kind of greedy sabotage engine. And that's really important. A lot of these Essa decks are running things like Banhar, even Botchalist you're still seeing. And these are sort of cards that have limited use and actually come at a big cost. While it's true that the Essa decks with Banhar can challenge single servers, that comes at a real cost. So making sure that they're using this ability and they feel like they have to run the remote server to check what's in there, again, having things to put in remote servers that aren't just agendas is generally a pretty potent thing to do, that helps. And that will allow you to control the narrative of the game so they have to interact with you and they don't just set up very quickly. Now, of course, if you're playing against Banhar, if you want to push out in a remote server, you generally want double ice servers. You do want your end the run to be on the innermost ice and the outermost, just whatever it takes just to res it so it eats the Banhar uh, ability. Secondly, recursion is so important. Now, most decks are playing three copies of Spin Doctor, and this is one of the matchups against Sabotage in which Spin Doctor gets used in a bit more of an interesting way. Of course, Spin Doctor can be resed to draw cards, and Spin Doctor can be used to, uh, at instant speed, uh, recur cards from archives, put them back into R&D. All this happens at instant speed. And you'll see in the upcoming games, a lot of times what I'll do is if I have an iced server, I'll put Spin Doctor in there. Because I understand, with a Spin Doctor on the table, I have full safety that if the Essa takes any amount of core damage and I have to sabotage, I can sabotage off the top of the deck no problem. If I sabotage two agendas in a really unlucky rip, I can just fix the issue at instant speed when Essa goes to check archives. If a Spin Doctor is protected, that means it's hard for Essa to contest that, which means there's a lot of core damage that gets wasted, a lot of sabotage that gets wasted, because again, I can fix it at instant speed. Even using Spin Doctor to draw cards mid-run when HQ has few cards in it and it's only agendas, all this stuff is very valuable. So making sure you're not just giving away Spin Doctors in the matchup is really important. If you can ice it up, 
Can you make it difficult or maybe Essa doesn't understand it's there because it's not rezzed? All that sort of stuff goes to distance and you'll see in the matchups coming up how we play with Spin Doctor. I think a big thing about this deck too is that because we are on a trick of light, because we're on a fast advance deck, we actually can use a remote server in the mid game uh, to just protect Spin Doctors because we're going to be fast advancing everything else out from hand anyways. That's pretty cool. Now, Sabotage on its own is a very interesting thing. This is Time Bomb. It's a Sabotage 3 card. You're not seeing a lot of Time Bombs in a lot of the standard versions, but the idea is Sabotage is technically an option you're giving to your opponent. When you play a Sabotage card, the corporation decides where that damage comes from. And generally in a lot of card games, giving your opponent a decision, they'll choose the worst option for you and the power of the card kind of goes down. That's definitely the same case when it comes to Sabotage, but the Sabotage cards are just kind of good enough. They're going to be disruptive, especially the way that they add on. If you can do a lot of Sabotage consistently, or you can do a lot of Sabotage in a single turn, this decision becomes increasingly more and more difficult. So understanding where to Sabotage from is of the utmost importance. Now, I've seen a lot of corporations just whenever they take Sabotage, they don't want to discard any of their cards from hand because they like their cards from hand and they lose that sort of tempo where they have to redraw to fill their hand up. And so they just sabotage from the top of R&D. And I think more often than not, that's probably incorrect. I think the more you play any deck, you start to realize what cards in hand are extra that you're actually not going to end up using. Ice looks good. But once you have six pieces of ice down, you're not getting that much value from the seventh ice. So the more you play any certain deck, the more you'll realize which cards you end the game with in hand anyways that are kind of expendable. So, so if Sabotage 2 comes in and you have two cards in HQ that are of middling value, I would probably get rid of those before the top of R&D. Mind you, if you have a Spin Doctor on the table and you think it's safe, so be it. You know, you do have to watch out though. And a lot of the good asset decks are combining some amount of HQ pressure as well. That is the basic idea that if you are always throwing out the worst non-agenda cards from HQ, uh, a well-timed legwork can easily steal two agendas, no problem, because that's kind of all that gets left after a lot barrage of Sabotage. You never want to be caught holding a hand of just agendas. That's something you might not have full control over. Maybe you can play a couple more filtering operations, things like uh, the sprint we have in the list, for instance, but also just having a proactive game plan and focusing on scoring out your agendas against a deck that's not amazing at producing breakers uh, is, is a pretty relevant way to deal with that as well. Now, icing archives is also something that comes up. Now, you'll see in the upcoming games that I don't often ice archives against Essa. I think there is some consideration to do that. Again, Essa is definitely going to want to run archives, but having a piece of ice there is basically uh, just forcing what they call a gear check. The idea is, that, do you have the breaker? If not, go away. And maybe that buys you some time to find a spin doctor or some recursion piece before Essa can find the appropriate breaker. And I think it's hard to make that call. I think once you do get a piece of ice rezzed and Essa is breaking it, you'll find out that Essa doesn't have to run archives that often in a game, maybe twice, maybe three times. You don't get a lot of money worth of the ice that you've rezzed there, considering Essa doesn't have to run it a lot. So more often than not, I like to take that ice and put it on the remote server and score more aggressively, or ice up HQ and then next R&D, because a lot of Essa's events fire off running those central servers. So archives is the payoff. It's hard to make the payoff taxing enough for that to actually matter. So. Your mileage may vary, but from my experience, at least in this deck, I don't think I have to ice up archives at all. Now, finally, and this is the biggest thing, and I think the easiest thing to fix when if you struggle against Essa is respect HQ. It's not very obvious, but Essa largely is an HQ pressure deck. This is Chastuska, and it's the most powerful event in any of these Essa decks. This is Sabotage 4 on an HQ run. And a lot of the really good Essa decks are going to set it up so they can Chastuska you, uh, suffer a core damage to get Sabotage 2, and then Chastuska you again. So if HQ can be run easily. You're going to be taking Sabotage 10 in a single turn. And the way Sabotage works, the more you take in a single turn, the more disastrously impactful it is because you only have so many cards in HQ. You really have to start going off the top of R&D and that gets bad fast. So you'll see just about every single turn one, I ice up HQ against Essa, even if I don't have agendas in hand, because you need to make sure that Shastuka doesn't land. And then from that point forward, I'll try to get a second piece of ice on HQ. If I have a border control, which Wayland does, this deck does, we generally will try and put a border control on HQ, because once that's set up, it's almost impossible to get Shastuka. And this is the most impactful single card generally in the list. And if you can't make HQ difficult to run, you're going to be in a very awkward spot. So. It's one of the biggest things I think you can do when playing against Essa, respect HQ. On top of that, we mentioned before, if you are sabotaging your worst non-agenda cards from HQ, Essa can get a lot of value from running HQ, which is probably going to have more agendas than non-agendas in the mid game. So another good reason to keep that locked up tight. Essa does have technically another run event that is a powerful central pressure card, and that's Finality. A lot of the decks right now that are being published are running three Chastushkas and only a single Finality. And I think Finality technically is a more impactful card in a lot of ways. You see four cards in R&D and the core damage does Sabotage too, so it's about six cards worth of accesses. That's a lot. 
But luckily right now, a lot of the decks are only running singleton copies of it. So I'm not that worried about R&D. Uh, I'll put an ice there for sure. So you don't just like lose single axes all the time, but uh, it's not something you can stop again. I think more importantly, get your remote server to be good. Get HQ to be good. Next is R&D if you can. And then, uh, and then I leave archives open. Additionally, if you want even more support against this sort of thing, things like Chrysium Grid, defensive upgrades, anything that makes the runs on central servers much more difficult, those also work really quite well. So you can slot these in if you struggle with the matchup, but otherwise, I think this deck specifically, it's not too bad against Essa. So your mileage may vary, but not a bad place to start at all. So just to recap, have a proactive game plan, try and push the issue, force them to play your game as much as possible. Use your spin doctors and your recursion intelligently. Use them defensively if you can. Try and obfuscate if you have the recursion on the table. And then finally, ice up HQ real hard. <laughs> you don't want to get just douche gut. R&D, you can let it slip a bit. Uh, if decks start to play more finalities, we'll readdress that going forward. But that is my ESSA plan. Again, we played a lot of games against ESSA, so you get to see what I do, how I prioritize recursion. Having Atlas tokens is also really nice because you, you can pull what you need from R&D, so you can kind of be a bit looser with HQ. But this is Hanging Gardens, and I hope it's a pretty nice introductory deck to standard, simple, focused game plan. You still get some very powerful cards. You still have some pretty good legs against a wider field. And most importantly, I think it's pretty good fun. So hopefully, if you've been a bit nervous about trying standard, this might be a nice gateway into that. And finally, before we get into the games, two quick things. Firstly, if you've been enjoying this sort of content, if you would like to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, all this sort of stuff really helps the channel grow. It'd be greatly appreciated. And secondly, and secondly, if you have been just recently getting into the standard format, if you have any questions, if you have any difficulties that you'd like to be addressed, please leave me a comment. We'd be excited to help you with that. And that's all. Enjoy the games. We're playing in standard. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen Gronkov. Good to hear from Gronkov. Uh, this ain't like reasonable enough. We can get an above the law behind a prior to construct a mouseless. It's hard for uh, uh, to, anarchs to deal with that. Uh, barring, I think boomerang is the only thing that gets them through that. And we still get three credits. So we're going to keep this. It's pretty likely they'll install a resource on turn one and we can above the lot pretty cheaply considering we score out and get credits at the same time. But uh, yeah, this is our deck. It's an Anson Rose deck. And the idea is that some of the face checks can be a fair bit more difficult on the ice. A lot of the code gates when they're triple advanced get absurd abilities. So that's why we're playing Prycon. Oh, we have a hostile in hand. I think we're just going to leave that open on the table. So we'll get this into your remote server. And then we'll just put this behind it. We can just score this out. And again, we can let this stew if they don't steal this and they don't play a resource, which I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, opening with steel skin. He, he kept. Okay. So this means liberated is less likely to come down this turn. A dirty laundry would be pretty good. You want to get that access to get that flip. Don't hit our hostile here. Sprint. Okay. That kind of shows you we're a bit of a fast advance deck. Maybe a hard hitting news deck. Throw them in the yo. Definitely have to respect that. There is a Puemo. We'd be okay trashing her. I don't think we're going to rush to trash her. I think we'd just score out the hostile. So there's going to be a flip here. Throwing out a uh, Black Orchestra. It's still six credits to get through the mouseless, and we still gain three. Oh, we opened up with the Alice. I think we're going to go push this. Unfortunately, if we don't score this out, yeah, we'll just score this. It's important we get one of these. I don't like to give a bad publicity on turn two, but I don't know what this looks like. Dreamnet's so good as a start. So now this is a bad pub and a card and a credit on a run, and it's going to keep Hoshiko on the digital side. Sure, Gamble. We're going to definitely trash a Dreamnet. I'm glad we held out for one turn. I think that's going to be more important than uh, the credits off of Wemo. Above the law, we're in three points already. We have an Alice for the remote server. Again, we're just kind of trying to go fast, seeing the top of R&D. We want to stymie the card draw because the card draw is much more important than just the credit savings of Puemo. Obviously, Puemo is going to be good, but ideally we close the game faster than this becomes like, you know, five credits from a uh, daily cast kind of level. OK, so I think we can just do install, install, hedge, and then we can consider if we have a trick of light off the top deck, that'd be good. We could advance this once that would put us on 10 credits, which means we can res both of those. I think that's actually more important. That we get an Alice with a counter, because then from there we can pull out one of our last combo pieces. But we are just going as fast as I was hoping this deck could go. Again, maybe Anson Rose doesn't make any sense in this list, considering, uh, uh, mind you, we're playing three Anson Rose right now. But how fast we want the deck to go. Oshiko still wants to get an access to turn. Gronkov knows that the top of the deck that we drew a board of control, if I'm not mistaken. So they have a pretty good idea what this is in terms of breakers, right? Like Anarch inconsistency. Drawn through a fair bit of the deck so far, but only a Black Orchestra, only six credits so far. So to get through just the mouseless is like quite difficult. It's six uh, to let one subroutine fire and then still you need to install that for three. So that's nine credits and then you still need to deal with the board of control somehow. So I think this is pretty safe. If, if he forces us to spend our money on this, admittedly, we get some money back from either board of control or mouseless. Then we might be in a hard spot. But yeah, we're just gonna be able to score that out. Gatchapon coming down. This is probably the sort of list that Gronkoff was playing at, uh, at Worlds. I think he was on Team Gatchapon there. So we're as a boarding control. 
If he cannot find a way to get through this, like a botulist, he doesn't find anything. So we're going to get two credits back. That's sick. A Fermenter will come down, though, for free, and you can clear some of these cards out of the deck. Again, I think you just want as fast as possible, so Paladin is going to come out. Mind you, Gatchapon lets you look at the top six, install a virtual or program at cost reduction of two. So we're going to get two credits back here, and we're going to be able to get an Alice with a counter, which will put us on game point. Uh, we have one Audacity, let alone a Trick of Light. Ooh, Alice off the top is good, though. All right, Miss Bones is thrown out. We're just going to score an Alice with a counter. We're only down to five credits. Uh, but if we top deck a trick of light and we, we just pull a three, two, if we pull a three, two, which is unlikely considering our ID is wide open, the twinning two, very good. Not using the paladin on the first install is fantastic. Just installing something so they can lock the top two of the deck, but we need to here find a trick of light. Uh, sprint can break our ID lock. I don't think we're excited to do that. I think we just want to get the Musfingo out there. Uh, spin doctor doesn't help that much. No trick of light. Okay. So I think we just need to get the trick of light. We can consider sprinting just to find a combo piece. I think Ants and Rose in the remote server forces uh, Grunkoff to do something. I think that's important. I think Spin Doctor is better, though, because it shuffles. So we don't want that. We don't definitely want one of those. So we're going to ice up R&D. And to trigger light out, we need two credits. Uh, technically, we actually only need one credit because we can install advance, get our money back. So here we just put something in server one. We res this. We'll still have enough money. But no fracture so far. And Masvingo only will have one sub. This is a spin doctor. I honestly don't think we res it because we res it. We risk having more cards in hand. Yeah, I'm not going to res that. I don't want to suddenly have more cards in hand and then he can run HQ. Maybe it was correct too because there's not a lot of agendas in the deck. I don't think we need to take that risk. We can also pad it if they come back for two clicks. If it was later on in the turn, yeah, but with two clicks left, I don't know. That might be incorrect. It does charge the twinning though. Is trick light off the top? No. Okay. So I'll put this in the <laughs> Oh man, wall to wall would have been so much better than this card. What are we doing? I think we can draw once. The remote server is still pretty safe. We'll get this in. And I think we put something in the remote server because maybe this causes a run. But here we have four top decks. In fact, we have, oh, there's only one more Alice. We have five top decks that can win next turn. Either any of the three, two agendas of which there's actually, no, there's two left. There's one Alice, one as Yef, the trick of lights or the audacity. So there's six top decks here. This doesn't actually do anything, but it's more so that maybe uh, this pressures a run on the remote server more than anything. Because if we had an agenda here, we would, uh, well, if it's not a 3-2, we would push it. If it's a, like a food, we'd push it. If it's a 4-2, we'd push it. There's a cleaver. That deals with Miss Fingo relatively well. So border control. So we can res this. It's a mouse list with three subroutines. Or sorry, three advancements. So this is going to fire. Oh, uh, yeah, there's no paladin credits. This just fires. There's a lot of value. You don't often see these triple advanced dice firing. If that was a Hordem, uh, he'd be able to break it. But I'm pretty sure it's three to install the Black Orchestra and then to start breaking it's six credits. So it's not the most impactful subroutines here. They're nice, though. Fire all. So game three, we hit a mad dash. That's actually really huge. We hit a hippo. That's pretty reasonable, but not the most important. But hitting the mad dash there is the most important because that's how we could consider losing. Now, uh, there's going to have to be a lot of work done to close the game out. Now, the twinning can lock the top of R&D. It's a pinnel. It's fine. <laughs> it's an heads and rows. <laughs> And uh, we're going to need a board of control to deal with the 20. Not that it does. Top deck. Come on, really? Ah, I'm really scared of the lock. Okay, let's draw once. Oh, man, that's so ugly. So we'll put this on R&D, I guess. He has a lot of money. The Hordem enforces an install. This forces a res back. But I, I honestly, we just have to get lucky off the top deck that we are able to pull out of here. I'm going to take the money card. Because he can see three next turn off the top of the deck. Again, he might be scared of this. We don't have a Colossus on the table. A Colossus would be something. Oh, no, actually, he has a big altar. It doesn't matter. And then he's getting all this free card draw. Like, he's 21 cards in. Like, he's drawn about, you know, 25 cards already. And now the 20 can see three cards as soon as he installs something. I don't know if purging is correct. It might be better than drawing. Uh, just because money is going to be a problem if we don't top deck well. Again, we have six top decks in 27. So about one in four, one in five. Top deck waiting room, like any good fast advanced deck. And really, though, if we draw an agenda and put it in the remote server, um, that's going to force a lot of credits because you have to run through this generally twice. That's going to be around 12 credits. No, he has 18. Uh, we just have to res this. The boarding control is res for one. Miss Fingo's res broken for one. <laughs> it's hard to imagine where Sice on the server. I would actually way rather have if we're playing into a Cleaver meta, which I don't think we are. It's surprising to see Cleaver in an arc. Uh, we probably have a paperclip still in a list somewhere. Yeah, there is fixed rate breakers here. This is probably on, um, what's it called? Turbine. 
I do think we can consider resing this again. We don't need a lot of money, but he's going to lock the top three cards of the deck. Luckily, a lot of the cards that if he steals, we can still like if it's a trick of light, we just have it. So that's one. Here we'll res the Misfingo. I think we do. It stops us from being able to advance it for a credit. I don't want to show what this is. Yeah, it's not good. That's pretty bad. We need to tax out any credits. It's just like this does nothing. Also off the top, that's fine. We didn't want to draw that. Unseen, unseen. Okay, so these unseen have to be audacity or uh, anything else. He had a tag? Did he have a tag? And we. Oh my god, he had a tag? Oh my god, he had a tag. We should have tried to winning. What are we doing? <laughs> he had a tag. <laughs> I can't believe he had a tag. Yeah, we definitely should have trashed the twinning. He got a tag off of the mouse list, right? And we did just totally forgot about it. But yeah, we should have trashed the twinning. Yeah, you should have. That's on me. Okay, this is really difficult. Um, if we get the, what's it called? The Hordem down, it costs us four. Again, I don't think we actually do the Miss Fingo. Uh, and that means he has to install his breaker and break it. So that's at least six, five with bad publicity. It's the best we got here. We don't want to draw because he knows the next card on top of the deck anyways. Uh, we might as well advance this. It shows us not a board control, but I don't think that matters so much. Yeah, we definitely should trash this. This is the card that we're going to lose to. Yeah, I did not. <laughs> he said, I thought you had some aggro line where it made more sense to rush. No, we didn't. All right, that's good. It's a hippo. So we res the Hordem. I do think we still trade the Hordem for four credits. If he hippos that, I think we're okay with it. I still forces him to pay the credits up front, but otherwise we have to get another ice. Uh, actually, might have been fine to just get a mess finger in front of it and not res it. And here he sees one new card. It's a border control. Colossus is not going to be very good until it's advanced. It's five, but you get two back. It's three with bad publicity. It's two. And merely can only run once, though. We're going to see three cards here. Oof. Ah. Yeah. This can't be great for us. Yeah, wall to wall seems way better than Anson. I don't know what we're doing. Steel skin. Okay. Top deck. It's an Anson. So we have to make somehow R&D more taxing than it is. I think putting a mess finger in front of it does something like it forces some amount of credits as much as he's losing one a turn, gaining two. He knows what this is. It's really hard to make um, Miss Fingo taxing into Cleaver. It just doesn't line up really well. So I think we just have to hold on. Well, Vancis wants this is akin to clicking for a credit. Uh, and immediately we could advance it another time to make it cost two to go through. Because this carries about the even amount of subroutines. Or sorry, odd amount of subroutines is where you want to be with Cleaver. Because Cleaver breaks one for two. And currently when this is rezzed, it'll get its own counter. So it'll be two subs. But then Cleaver still gets it through for one. So you want at least two advancements. Or sorry, three advancements on this. I'm pretty sure this is an Anson. I've been sick if it was an agenda. Just kind of push that in. But again, there are six cards we can top deck here. So now it's straight up one and four. Steel skin, that's the last one. Gone through again, 12 cards on the stack. Look how fast this deck draws. Just so much free card draw. Keiko coming down for only one. This is a really not interesting card, but it is a huge economy piece here. Trickster Taka as well. So that's easy ways to get the twinning. Twinning, you want to charge it every turn. No problem. If we resume his finger, we go down to one credit. That's enough to score out. So we will just to tax out all the amount of credits we can. I do think we'd consider resing this. I don't think we res the Anson. So that's one credit. This is one credit here. I think we can consider boarding controlling here. Because this is technically only one fresh card for the Axis. I think we can take those odds. Because he's only seeing one new card. Oh wait, did he not run last turn? Okay, that's fine. So we don't want to res Anson. That's it. Finally. <laughs> so we'll use this to pull, I don't know, let's go get an IZF. So we'll do new remote. Advance it once first. Trick of light. Okay, uh, it's worth knowing that trick of light, you need to click on the target first. And then the card you want to move from. Okay, good to know. Good game. Yeah. Fast advance waiting room. All right. Anson's pretty bad. I think we can just play wall to wall and actually does something. I think our, uh, what's it called? These cards here do just as much, if not better, uh, priority construction. It makes our ice really scary, right? Like getting a, the big uh, mouse list is hard to deal with. And face check on a Hordem too is like, okay, as long as you can go fast enough. But I think wall to wall just does everything we want to do. Okay. Uh, I think we're going to make some changes. Yeah, so uh, he's on Turbine. That makes sense. Yeah, this card doesn't really do anything. We'll get rid of Anson. It's a B-lister. Yeah, it's weird how that is. Yeah, I think there's a Stargate down. I think we're in a much worse spot than the twinning. I think we're going to try one more with Anson Rose, and then we're going to take it out because <laughs> probably it's not going to do anything. Hey, you too. Good hearing from me. All right, we're playing against Essa. 
We earlier today played against a 50 card deck Essa that reprised us and all our advanceable ice didn't exist anymore. Uh, Essa is like pretty tricky. If we're just going to sit back and wait until we draw our fast advance pieces, it can be quite hard. And we have some really good ice on the remote server. Triple advanced like Mouseless and Hordum. Like that stuff has three subroutines or at least one of them does, which is pretty good to Banhar. Uh, this hand is pretty bad barring the Spin Doctor. So we're going to mulligan it. That's what we want to open up with a priority construction. If we do priority construction with a Hordum behind it, we're in a really good spot. We just want something to put behind that. So a Rashida or some sort of like play that forces them to interact with us and not just sit back and like start sabotaging. So SN decks are kind of like pretty dependent on how quickly you can get spun up. Otherwise, you just have to kind of get lucky on the sabotage or sabotage well. So the question is whether we start with a sprint. Uh, we want to make sure we don't get Chestushka. So I'm just going to set this up and then have some Chestushka support on HQ. We don't have much money. So we can res this and go down to maybe one credit. That's pretty bad. But we want to basically just figure out a Rashida or a Spin Doctor even to put something just behind there. Single axis off the top. Ooh, food probably for a time bomb, right? Maybe trying to figure out by the deck. But that's a ghost tongue there. So I think we can just do two from the top of the deck. It's a Spin Doctor, hate it, and a Miss Fingal, That's fine. They have a black orchestra, so that is going to require money. Uh, we didn't want to draw the food. This is now another unknown card. They have two credits of trash. That's mostly just Rashida and spin. You trash a spin on site generally if you're asked, I'm pretty sure. And okay, botch us on board control. That's fine. Oh, that's why they to read Anson Rose. Anson Rose is neat because it's something we want on the table and it makes face checking into ice pretty scary, but it's not a consistent card. Uh, two cards to go back. Honestly, probably the Anson. That's not good. We could get Anson up with the mouse list and get that R&D. That's okay. Uh, maybe that's fine too. We have a trick of light, but we don't really want to like use it right now. I think we'd rather score behind a Hordum, which admittedly they break for only six credits. That's not great. Uh, we need to be able to get out of this hole. So I think we're going to put this on R&D, click for credit maybe. This on remote server is pretty good. It's hard for them to, uh, what's it called through this? I think they're setting up for Chistushka here. So we probably have to trade a border control for an open HQ, which is not great. Nuka, really good card draw piece. At, uh, you can just get out of your hand and get safe on the table before you start taking some court image, let alone net damage with Banhar. Deuces. Again, Ghost Tongue is there. You get a lot of value from this. It's a mouse list they know in R&D, so they have to make a run here. Uh, we're totally fine letting this run through. There's no clicks left for, uh, for a time bomb, and you're seeing less and less time bomb. All right, so we have Hedge Fund here in our hand. We have Anson for the remote server. Even if they trash it, it's fine. We know they're playing Dirty Laundry, but they can Dirty Laundry eye carves is Probably just as good as checking the Anson that we'll put out on Iced. Uh, I think we can draw once because that's our turn. Install, install. Yeah, okay. So I want to keep our remote server open for something. Again, if this gets trashed for four credits, so be it. Otherwise, we can actually ice it up with just like a simple Misvingo. And then from that point on, once it starts to get counters, it becomes our trick of light battery, let alone um, it makes our face checks pretty scary. So that's a raindrops. So we can res the mouseless, and it's going to do uh, a net damage, a tag, and gain a credit. Well, they will gain three cards. No, we can just let a single axis here. Okay, nothing there. So that's an answer. If you want to trash it for four, you definitely can. We spent a click and traded for a click and four credits. Take that economic warfare. <laughs> not exactly, but uh, yeah, we'll see if they respect this thing. Four is a lot to trash and one is not a lot for us to res. But uh, that gives you a lot of counters. Maybe they're worried about like biotic or labor, red planet couriers. That's pretty slow. I think I'd be kind of happy playing an Essa deck into that. But hey, four credits down. And there's a legwork here. We'll just let this through. This probably looks like the Grey Tongue List or some version slightly of that. They generally play one of legwork. So they know our whole hand. We, they know we have a Colossus, which is kind of scary. I think the board control is still worth something here on the Botulus. They know this is the Mouseless as well. Uh, they exposed it. So we want to find something to put in the remote server. Or just like do nothing, <laughs> which again is like one of the worst things to do against Essa. The longer this goes, the more likely they are to find their uh, sabotage. The more likely they are to get the marrow down. So our scoring out, it's a bit more difficult. But like this is absolutely brutal. Playing a deck that doesn't have like a very proactive game plan against Essa can feel like the absolute worst. So Labor Rates, they trash the deuces and marrow in a running hot. So here they can shuffle three cards back. Mind you, Labor Rates, a very, very interesting card. Uh, so they can bring back the legwork, the marrow, the running hot. This card's seeing more and more play raindrops. Again, we'll let a single axis there in for, for, they still gain three credits. It's basically a dirty laundry. There's a lot of agendas in R&D. Still nothing there. They trash a spin doctor. That's our second spin doctor. The chance of us finding a spin doctor in this game now is super low. This sucks. I wish we had something to do here, right? Okay, in terms of the breakers, they have everything. One of each, but not exactly the money to support it. 
So we're going to force the issue here. So we're going to put something on the remote server. So we have code gate. So to a barrier in front, just to make different types, you generally don't want the Colossus outermost and well, eventually you do, but once they have breakers down, otherwise they just say, I'm going to take a tag and you just spend six credits for nothing. All right. That's a marrow. All right. We can get rid of some cards. We know that there's going to be uh, an incoming at some point. I think Colossus is actually a bit more interesting than Hortum. Admittedly against Anarchs is like only an econ economic tax. But yeah, one card in HQ is a bit rough here, but Rashid is going to fix it. And it's not an agenda. If it was an agenda, this is a bit of a more dodgy play. Okay, here we'll res the mouseless. It's going to fire. Fire all. So they have a tag. They lost an MK Ultra. We got a credit. Single axis, though. Off the top, they've been getting a lot of single axes. Again, the decks are usually the ones that are posted on Narrowing BR, only on a single finality here. Uh, there's nothing in the bin, but they see two spin doctors, which, you know, that feels pretty good. And just click for credit there. So we get a Rashida here. Again, we haven't seen an agenda in a year, so we'll probably see multiple here. Okay. So we have Atlas. We can just score the Atlas out. I think I want to do Atlas advance and then put a board control on their mode server. Uh, Atlas with the counter is so important. So the question is, what do we do last click? This costs us seven. I think we just want to get this on HQ. If they Chastushka, so we trade a board control. They probably have multiple Chastushkas, but they only have one card in hand. So again, they've been setting up more for like single accesses than they have been like extending their game plan. So there's a chance that the fact that we're going slow enough will catch up. All right, that is going to be a uh, bravado. I think the boarding drill here is res for one credit and just fires. Again, this is still a good card. It's four credits, but they're not going to get very far on the server. They have good information what this is, and they can probably run it. Uh, but at that point, they have only one click left. So once they get through all of this, uh, we can fire the boarding drill if we really think it's necessary. They have one click left here. In terms of the bin, again, they have all their breakers. But they had, their money is all tied up. I don't think they're going to play any uh, resources besides maybe one light the fire. But again, all their economy comes from these like burst operations or sorry, events that get played cheaper through Ghost Tongue. So their economy can like suddenly like they play, you know, sure gamble for five credits for a click. It's pretty good. But with two cards in hand, they don't have a lot of options for a deck that is, you know, going to be inherently pretty uh, event based. So we'll see. I think a new code probably be what they want here. Considering whether they want to push through this again, they have to break this. Then we resume a Sphingo, which costs them only two credits as we will have one advancement on it. So running HQ here, here we don't mind at all. We can actually consider resing the border control, but I think I like the surprise of what the border control is because they'll maybe confidently Chastushka this. All right, that's the last food. We're just going to get this out with a counter on it. We're on nine credits. We have to sabotage one. Uh, Hordem goes. So legwork here will connect. We could always border control it, but then we're Chastushka time. Don't get Chastushka. Try not to get Chastushka. I think the deck probably has too much ice. I think we're running like, what is it? Yeah, we have way too much ice. We're 50 nice in a 44 card deck. That's probably a bit too much. Okay. Botulus. Again, this is just a single axis. I don't think we're that worried about single axes. You have to get lucky. So they're going to take a neck damage. They lost a marrow. That makes sense. We got a credit off the top. Nothing. Oh, Rashida got trashed. Okay, cool. So we have a hostile. I think we're just going to score that out. We might have a window here to push the food. Immediately, if we score this, it doesn't help us score at the food. I think they actually appreciate the bad publicity more than we do. But we could do install advance advance. We also do install advance credit. On six credits, I don't know if they can deal with this. I think we'd rather push this out. So we could advance this once more. I think we will. Otherwise, we could uh, try and trickle light it out. But I'm assuming we're going to score this out and try and trickle light out uh, whatever 3-2 we pull from the top of the deck with an atlas. We also watch out. If they ever ended their turn on one card in hand. Oh, maybe they did for a moment. They had one card in hand. We actually could, could have considered. Uh, did we miss the Azef lethal? Oh, I have to watch out. If they ever end with one card in hand, we have lethal. I think we might have missed lethal earlier. Oh, excuse me. That's on me. So paperclip's down for two. So this raindrops is pretty good. Oh, they're just firing it. Okay. So they're going to continue going, which means actually our Hordem will fire and it can add us everything to our hand. I haven't seen a triple advanced Hordem fire in a minute. Again, this is for every, what is this? When a subroutine resolves. So we could res the Misfingo here and end the run, but I think I actually want to res the Hordem and fire these two subroutines. I think that that's more important for us than for them. It's either here, we can res the Misfingo and then they got, draw two cards or they can draw three cards and we get the absurd value of the Hordem. I think we're going to res the Hordem. So this is a triple advanced Hordem. Mind you, sorry, they are uh, raindropsing this. So this is a Hordem. So we're going to gain four credits and search for two cards. So pretty good. So what cards to add to HQ? This is pretty difficult sometimes. Uh, I think we'll do a Trick of Light and a Spin Doctor. They have some good reasons here to go HQ. They probably should. We have to score this out next turn, but we can actually trickle light it out. I don't think the Hortum needs triple advancements anymore. I'd love to pull a Mavirus there if we had one on the list. I think we have one influence that we used for a sprint that maybe we don't need to. 
All right, they have one click here. This is still really difficult um, because they have to deal with this ice. So I don't think this botches does enough. They might trade for the boarding troll. So they break the end of the run. So that actually here we stop them just with the Misfingo. We could let them go through there and pop the boarding control, but I'm going to keep the boarding control for as long as possible. So this has one in the run subroutine. They're one credit short because they cost them two to break this. They have one. Okay, so we have to score out the food. That means we're going to discard a card. <laughs> okay, all the trick lights. We don't need the... Uh, we have to sabotage one. That's perfect. I don't think we need money anymore. And then from here, we can basically pull a 3-2 from our deck and Alice out. I'm pretty worried that we forgot the ICF lethal. So this is finality. We have to sabotage two. Uh, we, in theory, could lose from the top of the deck. They have one click left here, so they can't run HQ. So we can actually just throw out, like, known cards. So they're going to see four here. So we just pull the three, two to hand to make sure that we're safe enough. And I don't. it's hard for them to win off the top of the deck. So we're going to use our Alice counter. We're going to pull uh, an above the law. And then they can see four here. They have one click left, and we have a board control and HQ. So they have to steal three agendas. Nothing. Archives, totally clean. They could go for a look there, too. We did just trash two from HQ, so they're going to just check that there. And we're going to get closed out. So we were pretty slow. Uh, we were very slow. Once we took off, we took off. But definitely worth noting, if you want to advance that first for more money, is that, uh, yeah, they, they went for a lot more singles, I think, than maybe uh, setting up a bit. And sometimes it works out. It's hard. Good game. But in theory, once they're set up and they're sabotaging consistently, it is really, really quite difficult. We're lucky that we didn't see a single chest two scar, a lot of HQ pressure. Immediately, the board control only holds for so long. But uh, anything we draw, we just have to smash into the remote server. And it's a pretty good remote server for what it's worth. Ants and Rose still not doing anything. <laughs> Let's do another one. All right, we made some changes to the deck. This is all Anarch all day. Let's go. Uh, we're playing against Hoshiko, but now we have, uh, we dropped the Colossus, which don't seem that relevant unless we advance them. They're pretty expensive. We're playing Veritas as like a soft economy card. I think it's hard for uh, Hoshiko to deal with this, barring just tracing is totally fine when you have a link when you're flipped. This opening hand, we have a hostile. We definitely want to ice up centrals because Hoshiko wants to take a poke. So we might lose a Spin Doctor on turn one if we do a hostile. I think this is on the verge of being good. If we draw into a piece of ice, that's better. I think we're running less ice now. I think we're on the, um, a uh, Kets over the Misfingos, because Misfingos have been terrible, especially with that in. So we'll keep this, but this is on the cusp of not being great. We definitely want a nice piece of ice there. Oh, Hordem's nice. So here I think we just want to ice up Centrals. We're going to wait until we draw into hopefully a priority construction for their mode server, and then we can maybe find it with a Spin Doctor. So we're just going to ice up Centrals so it's harder for uh, Hoshiko to get her flip, and just go from there. Next turn we can score the hostel unless we have a better play that we want to find something with Spin Doctor. But uh, in theory, Hoshiko can run archives to access a, a sure gamble, or sorry, the hedge fund that we played, which is honestly not the worst click. It's a click for a card draw and a credit. But Liberate Accounts is coming down instead, that Anarch open, and you're going to get that flip too. So this is actually pretty dodgy into hard hitting unless you take the Liberated. But I don't know. I don't think a lot of players have been respecting hard hitting, and there's been so much ESSA that I think you just play hard hitting. Nine credits. Okay, no, that's fine. All right. I think we're just going to go for it. This gives us a fair bit of money. Uh, it's almost as good as the outfit. It gives us seven plus two, minus two, seven. Uh, so 16, but bad publicity will go pretty far. Hoshiko generally wants to run once a turn. The big question here is how quickly that she can produce her breakers, because there's not a lot of consistency. Never mind, Banhar. Uh-oh. <laughs> Love to see it. We got trickle light. Let's start here with a spin doctor. Let's find some options. Now we need to double ice everything. And we want the end of the runs to be on the inside largely. Uh, so here we could do like a cat into Rashida. It's not particularly great. We can consider advancing this. Uh, we want to get this to two advancements. We want to get anything to two advancements. I think, well, I just ice it up, I reckon. And we can just advance this one once. Again, it's just as good as clean for credit. It gives them some information that's not a border control. So that's a bit, you know, maybe not the best. Let's see, we just got Shastushka or Finality here. Mind you, R&D is the mark. Just Maker's Eye. This is three net damage, though. I'll take that trade. Uh, Maker's Eye is pretty good, though. We know our deck is holding right now eight agendas, so pretty likely to hit something here. They lost a mining accident. They hit a steel skin, though, so they drew, and they lost a black orchestra. So they have a decoder now, but they're going to see three here, mind you, off the eye. Bad publicity is well to trash. Wall to wall is coming down for three with the bad pub and nothing else. That's two wall to walls down with a spin doctor. I think we're okay with that. Liberated for four. Now they're charging this. This Aket will advance itself. Actually, maybe not. But this forces, uh, they don't have a paperclip, right? Yeah, this, so this does advance itself, which turns on Trickle Light. Immediately, they're drawing, uh, we're not drawing an unknown card. So this should fire. 
So we can advance something. We'll advance the Aket itself. This is really taxing. Again, we just want to make sure this doesn't get paid. Actually, we don't have to. Uh, we'll pay five here. I don't want to give them another bad publicity. We can afford to. We have a hedge fund in hand. But that's a mining accident. Gets removed from a game. Uh, they flip because they accessed. All right, hoard him. It's going to cost them with bad publicity. Without bad publicity, six to get through on the first time. So I think here we probably just crack the spin doctor to put the wall to walls in or wall to wall hedge fund. So we do We want Rashida basically. So we do install Rashida. We install the Hordum and then we probably just hedge fund. So I think we'll do. I like wall to wall. So this is weak to pinhole, but of course it is. And we'll go from there. We're really trying to find an agenda here. We have trickle light go live and well. Um, I think we would consider above the long a Banhar if we had it. We probably would. But it's really important to double ice this. I think they might choose HQ here and send it. But this is an interesting build of their maker's eye. I wonder if they're on legwork. Uh, even just like, uh, what's it called? Seems good enough. Jailbreak sometimes. Dreamnet is also the thing that we want above the law if we find it. But hey, it's a one of. So why are we counting on it? Yeah, HQ. One good hit in there. They can sweep all of this if they have a bit of multi-axis. And we want to make sure we have at least five credits. Uh, mind you, there's only one more mining accident. This card used to be very, very popular. Keiko coming down for three, giving one back. So this is a Hordum. We can trade a Hordum going down to five credits for two net damage. I think we take it. We then also have a Hordum, which is like, okay. And we're having a Rashida here, so we can dip a bit lower. And it's unlikely for them to have the third mining accident here. So this is going to be, again, they could consider breaking it for all their money, but they're going to take two net damage. So we <laughs> we actually took out the last mining accident. That's sick. And unfortunately, it was an MK Ultra. So they have access to everything besides their Fractor. So two net damage for an access here. Don't hit the Spin Doctor. They hit the Spin Doctor. I hate it. We've been losing Spin Doctors from Central's real bad. And especially when we're playing against so much Essa, you feel it worse than any other matchup. All right. That is a Rashida. Let's go get some cards and some credits. Okay, so here we could consider just installing behind Hordum into a Ket. Uh, we probably want to advance this once, which is a bit expensive. Wall to wall on the table is kind of bad with a bad publicity deck, actually. Um, not that we are a bad publicity deck, but the fact that they have bad publicity. I think it's something that we can, like, it, if they run it, it turns on their Hoshiko ability, which is kind of rough. But here, I think we can just do install advance. Advance. And by advance, I think the second advance will be on this one. So now if they do Benhar, we have to raise a Hordum, uh, and then the Aked is hard to deal with. We might lose this Atlas. Again, I think a, just a Botulus loses it. This is a bit risky, I think. We could have just trickle lighted this out, but they haven't set up too hard. Benhar, no server. That's an option. Draw, draw. So here they have to do Botulus run, and they're still kind of worried that this is a boarding control. Liberated. Amazing. Imagine that was an above the law. It's not. They're going to flip back. We have a Prycon for the future. We're going to do advance, 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 score out with a token on it. So we're only on five credits. But here we can go to, to five agenda points next turn if we just trickle light that thing out. And from there, we're going to have to trickle light again. So we're going to have to get some free advancements. We'll get the wall to wall in server two if we don't want to push out. And I don't think we do push out here. I think we're, if we put something in the remote server, that might draw enough attention. I think we're okay prior to constructing just about anything. And this doesn't do install costs, which is sick. So it's easier to build big remote servers. Paperclip's in the bin now. Okay. So we can. I think we were just going to kind of push them into the remote server. So we'll do priority construction to get the Aket server two, and we'll put this in server two. Just draw some attention. Obviously, we're a bit weak to central server pressure, and they might just like Banhar R&D. We don't have a lot of money either, or Banhar, sorry, HQ. Uh, but we just want this to live for a bit so that we can trickle light out. It's on HQ. <laughs> Shit. Maybe we should have just gone for it. Liberated. Let's see if they have a legwork here. They have 17 credits. Oh, it's a maker's eye. So they're just firing this. That makes sense. Again, this ice doesn't do that much. They could consider breaking it. It's a bit expensive. I think you break one separate team and do a trace. Admittedly, it's they don't have a link on this side. So probably just fire the trace here. That's fine. It's still taxing enough. And it's okay. They have to see a lot of agendas here. They're breaking all of it. I think it's cheaper to fire the trace. Assuming we're not going to boost. I don't think we boost. Oh, okay. Okay, they're just taking it back. I don't think they wanted to break all the subs. I think they just fire the trace. So this will lock the top of the deck. Pretty good. MK Ultra coming down. Again, they break three and then they can just fire the trace. Yeah, it's one credit cheaper. Oh, the runner loses two. They're doing that one. Oh, yeah, I guess. They're both the same. They're both the same. So they see three cards here. Hostile off the top. We didn't want to draw that. And that's it. They have one click left here. They can run HQ for two net damage. Or they can install the breaker and break. And then they have to hit the Atlas. Okay, so we have a wall to wall here. We're going to res it. So we can do everything. I think we do want to draw a card. They know the next two cards, so they'll know the next... Well, they'll know nothing. We just broke lock. We'll gain a credit and we'll advance 
Uh, I think we advance. It doesn't really matter. Well, yeah, it does. This one we might not res. So here I think we just squared the Atlas. Advance. And then we have fast events in hand. So we'll... I forget which way it goes. It goes from there to there. Yeah. So target source. So now we're on game point. So the top of R&D is unknown. We could have chose not to draw. Up to three. Yeah, we could have chosen not to draw, which might have been right. Because now they can see a new card on top of R&D here. And uh, we have something with two advancements on it. So they basically have to steal. They have to trash this somehow. Win the game. Or steal all the other two pointers in the game. Three twos in the game. Which is pretty difficult. So this is probably their last turn. Fueno is going to be a bit too little too late. But she usually is. Going HQ here. Uh, they could just take two net damage. Or he could break this for three plus three. Minus bad pub. Which is going to take the net damage. Sick. Lost a black orchestra and a daily casts. A single error. Just a boarding control. And that should be game again. The Alice counter is how we're going to find the last piece that we want. All right, uh, let's draw a card. Oh, Audacity also does it. Gain a credit, we'll advance this. This doesn't matter. So we'll use this code token. We're going to go find our above the law. We're going to put that into a new remote server. We're going to advance it once. And then we could either Audacity here or Trick. We'll do Trick just because it seems more fun. And then we, of course, are going to score this and trash Fuenzer Fueno. She knows what she did. Good game. Yeah, definitely a faster deck there. Uh, we, this is only turn nine. We're going pretty quickly, and the advanced dice can be hard to face check into, right? Like, a cat with three advancements is not as strong as maybe potentially a mouseless, or even a face checking into a Horton with three can be pretty frightening. If you just push in the remote server and go quickly, again, hopefully the game closes fast enough. But we had a good enough hand. It was a bit risky, uh, but I think we had a hand that we really wanted to push out for, and that's really important. Yeah, cool. Let's do another one. This one, this version is better. All right, so when you're seeing the video, we've only exclusively played against Anarchs all today. It's just been Essa and Hoshiko. We're playing against Arbuckle. Arbuckle said that they're figuring out this deck for the first time. So again, we'll keep that obviously in mind. Our opening hand, we have a nice boarding control. Good for the remote server, wall to wall. We want to protect that up. It's a pretty good card. Better than Anson Rose, turns out. No surprise. Uh, otherwise, we have a good enough hand. Giving Hoshiko, who definitely wants to run every turn, bad publicity feels pretty bad, but scoring one of these out is kind of important. So we're going to keep this. We just want to draw into one more piece of ice. I think we have like now 15 or 14. I think we had too many in the early version of the, of the list. All right, and we're off. So we have to decide what to do here. We can just like score the hostile. I think that's fine. Bad publicity means we might lose a spin doctor or a uh, what's it called? A wall to wall. I don't want to put boarding control over HQ. So I think we're just going to send it in the remote server, get a lot of money. Maybe there's some respect against hard hitting news, but for what it's worth, Hoshiko's really good into hard hitting news because when she flips, she gets two credits and a link. Maybe she loses one, but not at the point where the hard hitting news trace fires. That can matter for clearing the tags, but it makes it harder for uh, the tags to stick in the first place. So we have a good economy start for Mentor. Click one. Rogue trading. Ooh, it's a tag me list. Okay, so these are a fair bit more difficult to pilot. So we'll see if this is our buckle's first time figuring this out. Again, you have to respect or protect the rogue tradings. You don't want to take tags here because we'll definitely just trash this. Uh, that means that they're playing, uh, what's it called? Counter surveillance is really important. Uh, they're definitely going to have to hit the rogue trading next turn. So we want to make sure we're able to trash it. We're not stuck in a situation where uh, we can't. R&D is wide open here. 10 agendas and 38. All right. We, <laughs> we struggled there for a bit. Our buckle wasn't seeing the like, the no further actions button. Uh, the DC didn't rejoin. We're good now. All right. We have a pride con. Uh, that's not very good with our hand here. We are probably going to trash a rogue trading. The big multi axis we worry about is counter surveillance, and that scales with how many tags. So I think we're just going to get this in the remote servers to set up a bit. Server two, that's fine. We could hedge fund here. We don't really need the money aggressively. Uh, it puts the spin doctor as a one in three in HQ. We'll see. I, again, I think they're probably just rogue trading here twice. It's hard. They're going to have to crack the fermenter if not. Ooh, that's good. Okay, so they're not playing tag me. All right, so they're not playing tag me. They're actually going to clear the tags. I don't know if they're on security nexus, but we have to also watch out for things like a uh, hopper suit. But I don't know how hard it is to import that entire package into um, Anarch. So maybe this is just having a link and playing security nexus. That'd be pretty cool. So they took a tag here. We're going to boost into it. So they have one a link. We're just going to boost into it and trash everything. So it's they can make a trace six. So we're going to spend six to make a trace seven. And then we're just going to trash the table. We have to trash the rogue trading with trash the Citadel Sanctuary. Yeah, it's hard to do these sort of things if you don't have a lot more money in the corporation. Now, sometimes like boosting into it is a losing line. We'll draw one. Okay. Gain credit. We'll advance this again. Here, uh, we're just going to start trashing things. That's a lot of money for the deck. I think we're going to play this and then trash that as well. Uh, trashing the Earthrise is actually kind of important too. This is really important, though, because they still have to clear manually the tag. And so that costs them two credits on a click. So that is an economy card that we hurt them. 
Uh, but here, next turn in theory, we could score out that Project Atlas with a trick of light from hand if we really wanted to. But yeah, this sort of list, again, if you're going to do a trace at the end of our turn to clear the tag, you have to make sure that you have about as much money as we do. We were pretty lucky to, uh, I didn't realize that they weren't going to clear the tag, that we hedge fund the previous turn, because we, uh, we played two hedge funds. They still have a lot of money here on the Fermenter, top of R&D, unknown. Bad publicity will help. We are breaking lock technically every turn if they only see one card, if we're drawing with the wall to wall. We always could just like, oh, Dreamnet's really good for them. I think here with no breakers, with no credits besides the eight on Fermenter. Okay, they have an MK Ultra. I do think we return this to hand and we just put the Atlas behind this. Hopefully we draw another piece of ice. So we'll first draw a card. We'll gain a credit and we'll add this to HQ. Okay, so here we could do Prycon to get the big old mouse list on server two. I think that's pretty reasonable. And then we can put the Atlas behind it. And then we can even trickle light out the Atlas to get it to have an encounter. The other option is just install advance. Again, I think they're going to be on eight credits next turn. They're going to get a card and a credit every run. So the question is whether we pry con this or not. Uh, the yeah, mouseless is really good with the face check into it. Maybe we can just slow roll this. Maybe we don't have to go fast. So we can probably do both. Like we don't have to score this out next turn if we don't want to. But that's a hard server to check. It's mouseless into boarding troll. Uh, purging at some point might be reasonable. I wonder if the sprint in this deck should just be a Movirus. It's just not very consistent as much as we're running into so much anarch today. So Earthrise everything's gone if we don't score this out next turn we probably just purge i wish we had the wall to wall on the table maybe just so we can get value while we're taking a whole turn off but yeah i think purging here would be pretty bad for them i think they have to crack this feel food off the top okay credit credit again daily casts okay we have to consider whether we want to purge now it'll drop them down to two credits uh, again they can trigger their order here so they can lose a credit from hoshiko first while they have no credits and then take two from daily cast we have a mouseless. The other option is we can do advance, ice up R&D, and then put this in a remote server. I think that's fine, too. I don't think we have to exactly purge, but this turn, they really have to do something about it. And if this is good, it's good. It's good if it's good. And we're going to set up, hopefully, the boarding control to be our trick of light target, because we'd love to keep three on mouseless for the horrible, horrible face check. Miss Bones? Oh, that's quite nice. That deals with the wall-to-wall -wall relatively easily. We just threw that away. That's fine. Uh, this also gives them a card and a credit, which is quite good. And I don't know, maybe we purge here. It's kind of hard though. Next turn, they're going to get 12 credits off of this, but Miss Bone's pretty good there. They actually made money off that run as much as she cost too. Maybe we'll just stick to our guns and try and score out. I think if they want to be really safe, they should just crack the fermenter. I don't think they have to be greedy. In terms of breakers, they have uh, all of them. They just don't have the money to support this. So this is a mouse list. We can raise this for four or drop us down to seven. Uh, we'll probably get a credit back here. We definitely do. So we're on eight. That's enough for the remote server. So we'll do this. This gives them a tag last click. That's kind of disastrous. I think we'll just take a turn off and probably trash some stuff. I think we're more worried about the dream net. It's just a lot of card draw. Like they're getting two cards a turn. Basically, clicklessly. They want to be running once a turn. So this should fire. So we got rid of a hippo. That's pretty good. Uh, they took a tag. And an, the net damage was the hippo. And we got a credit back. So single axis here off the top. I'm really worried if they're on hot pursuit. I don't know. I don't think they are. Maybe they're just on rogue trading. Maybe they're on Nexus. Okay, here. So we can score out the Atlas. I don't think we're in any rush to do it. The, we have a bunch of options. I think purging is rel rel reasonable. We can always like trickle light. So we can do advance, trickle light, trash. Uh, that puts us down to four credits. I think I'm more worried about the dream net. Again, if they have all the credits in the word, I think I'm actually more scared about that. I think we're just going to purge here. Because they need money to get their breakers down. They have access to all their breakers. So the card draw like is good, but they still have to clear the tag here. But the bridge cost them 10 credits. So it seems okay. Would you spend your whole turn to make the runner lose 10 credits? Yeah, probably. Dirty laundry is good here. Smashing to the mouseless. I'm surprised. They seem to love running R&D, right? Like maybe if we had an agenda, it would go into server two. I think that's totally fair. Uh, but they're going to tag me down. They lost the Stargate there. I wonder if that's what they want to get down next. But now there are two tags in. You have to worry about boom and other tag punishment. We're not running any. Not that we've really shown that. But seven credits here. Liberated. They have two tags, though. That can't be good. We're never going to squash this agenda out. We're just going to trash things. I wonder if they want to undo that. Yeah, yeah. I think they realize their tag. They don't want to install the liberated there. They're going to clear the tag. Okay, cool. Okay, they just clear the tags. That's totally fine for us. Uh, you know, they have to discard a card. It's usually not the worst for these Anarch decks. You just throw out a breaker or whatever the worst card in your hand is. They're probably not going to play all six. Yeah, there you go. So no punish there. So they're not tagged. So I think we're just going to score this out. We have a counter on this. We have a trick of light in hand. We have priority construction with the mouse list, which ignores install costs too. So these are really hard to deal with. They generally pay six and then we get three credits. Pretty good piece of ice. Unfortunately, though, it's remote server only. 
So they have to generate enough pressure. And if they keep going through the mouseless, right? Like that's pretty difficult. They're actually clearing the tag. If they had like a Nexus or sorry, a Citadel Sanctuary and they actually clear the tag, uh, that's sick. That's a lot better for them. But otherwise, this costs them a lot, a fair bit to go through this. And we, we appreciate the credit. We won't say no to the credit. From enter, there's a Citadel. So now they can run through the mouseless pretty easily. We still have more money than them. So like we could consider boosting into this trace and trashing. I think the Dream Net would be most important. So we'll see what they do here. Fire all, okay. So they lost the Liberated. We knew that card in hand. They get a single Axis here. Keeps them flipped, which is good. They know a lot of what we draw. So here, again, we have to pay like three credits for them to clear the, keep the tag. We have to do some math whether that's worth doing. Acacia, <laughs> neat. So this card, if they purge, they get money. So generally, we just don't purge. Is that worth a card slot? I'm not sure. So here, we'd have to pay two credits. We'd be on five. And then we can start trashing their installed cards. What do we actually want to trash? The Dream Net's probably the most trashable. I don't think it's actually that important. I don't care about trashing the daily cast. This is the dream net of anything. So it costs us four credits to trash the dream net. I don't think we want to do that. I think we just want to fast events out before any of this generates more value than uh, time in the game. Okay. I think we start with a sprint to get an agenda. We didn't. Uh, would we rather have a Rashida or a wall to wall is the question. Because here we can't afford to pry con out. So I think we just get Rashida in their mode server. Uh, and then we could do... We probably just advance. Oh, we can't advance the boarding troll. We probably should never advance the boarding troll. I guess it was free. We advance the mouseless once, I think. So we'll shuffle back. Spin Doctor is good too, because we can get an agenda. So maybe we do Spin Doctor first and then Rashida. Yeah, okay. So trigger lights are how we win. So wall to wall and a cat. They need to install their breaker. I like a cat. They seem to be going through the other one. So we'll put this in the server and then we'll, I think we'll put Spin Doctor in server. They might like maybe we raw, raw an agenda and it gets pretty ugly. So we'll do server two here. We'll do Spin Doctor. It's a bit dodgy. In theory, we should have done Spin Doctor first and resed it to see what we got. If we got an agenda, we could jam it. But I'm pretty sure if we get an agenda besides food, we just trickle light it anyways. This is just a bit scary if they res this. Run this because then we res it to an open HQ. You generally don't want to do that. But if their economy is rogue trading, right? It's pretty slow at this point in the game. Maybe they're only on two, though. I think it's only two influence. So it's like pretty splashable. Yeah, two influence is not bad. So we'll res this. So we hope we don't draw into agendas into HQ. That's totally fine. Uh, will we force them to spend two? No, this stops them from accessing a card. So we get a spin doctor back in. And I think here we get a sprint back in. Actually, hedge one's pretty good. We don't have a lot of burst economy in the deck. That's good enough. And here we're like totally set up to basically we need to get two advances on the mouse list or one more advancement on the board of control somehow. Running HQ, trick light. So we purge. They gain five credits. Yeah, that's not good. Buemo. If they had a hot pursuit, they send it HQ. That'd be pretty bad for us. Oh, it's Rashida. Remember to res her. Draw through game three. Let's find an agenda. We do. It's above the law. That is sick. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and score that from hand. So server two. Advance. Trick. We're going to throw out a bunch of cards here. I don't mind so much because we're on game point. Uh, technically, yeah, with Audacity, we're on game point. So target, source, two. Score this out. We can choose what we want to destroy. I think we're going to destroy the card draw card. And we have to discard four cards here. So we'll get rid of the trashables. I think a spin doctor is almost always worth keeping uh, just in case we'll get rid of the Prycon. So here, basically, we just pull our audacity from our deck with the Atlas and then or the three two agenda, whatever we draw in first. If that doesn't happen, we just double advance both of these or at least one of these, the mouseless, so that we can also win off a trick of light. Practice for mentor. There's a liberated in hand. Again, it's a pretty slow. It's hard to get enough value off of that when we're on game point, because if we top deck a three two, we win here. Or if we top deck the audacity, we win here. Unfortunately, yeah, our advancements are, we have to spend more time advancing stuff. Ooh, Ma, that's pretty good. That's scary. Okay, so I think we just do advance, advance, put something in their mode server. We're going to lose one card to Ma, but there's no single card that we lose to Ma that costs us the game. So here they have to hippo the mouseless. Actually, it would be better to advance this mouseless here uh, because it's safe to hippo if we never res it. So that's actually a bit of a misplay here is that there is a card in standard. It's pretty common in Anarch decks called hippo that allows you to trash the first dice that you break all subroutines on this one here. So that is a really big deal that you technically want to advance the cards that are harder to hippo because if they hippo this, it buys them an entire turn. Admittedly, if they do that, the wall to wall probably converts to another advancement. All right, so we're not going to pull with the token here. Because then we could lose uh, like the audacity to Maw, but maybe we could consider doing it. What's happening here? Oh, sorry, they're breaking. OK, so Black Orchestra coming down for two with Bad Pub. If they want to break this, it's six credits and it only breaks two subroutines. The math on orchestra into uh, mouseless is not very intuitive uh, because the first time you fire this, it doesn't break any subroutines. The second time you sub fire it, then it starts to break subroutines, but the first boost doesn't. So you spend six to only break two instead of four. And it's also one cheaper because of Puemu. But if again, generally you break this, if you do break this 
And I don't think you do, right? Like the tag, you clear clicklessly, the net damage is whatever, the credit is whatever. So I think you save your money here. I don't, I don't know if you spend six. Pay three, so it doesn't do anything yet. Pay three, and then you choose which two subs you break, and then they can probably just take the tag. We have more money though, so it's kind of scary. Fire out, okay. So we gain a credit. Again, they ended up spending nine, technically seven with bad plug, but I think you can just let that fire and break for free. Because if they didn't spend that money, they would have the money to use Citadel. Maw, trash a card, not a fast advance piece, nothing off the top of the deck. And they have one click left here somehow to close the game. Earthrise Hotel won't do it. Hoshiko flips. All right, so we'll draw once, gain a credit. We'll advance a card. And now we can just use our token here to go find a piece. Let's get the uh, ZF. New remote server. Advance first for ability. And I'll close the game out. Good game. Wall to wall seems so much better. Thanks for the game. I was really surprised to see the tags come down again. I thought it was a tag me deck until you start to see the Citadel Sanctuary. So I wonder if there's one or two more payoff cards for this sort of engine. Because like the road trading engine is a bit clumsy. Uh, so you generally can play more tag based payoff cards, whether it's credit kiting, security nexus even. I guess if they're on Ma, they're not on nexus. But uh, yeah, it's a fun engine. I, I like road trading. It feels good. It feels weird. It's just it's a bit slow. It's like our seventh game against Anarch only. Anarch only. Uh, it's only been Essa and Hoshiko. Uh, oh, our opening hand though, you have Rashida behind a Hordem. That's okay. The food in her hand, it's like whatever. But I really value getting something on the table in the early turns to make sure uh, that we're doing something, so we don't just like lose to sabotage slowly. Uh, otherwise, I would love to have another ice on HQ just so that we don't get Shastushka. But we're gonna keep the same. Uh, don't love the food initiative, but we can sprint that away. Some games you score that out, but it's obviously like. Or at least interesting agenda. It's tempo negative. You generally don't want to score out in the early game uh, as much as we want to just fast advance out as much as we can. I think we added a Malapert to this list instead of a Chrysium. This is the matchup where the Chrysium seems a bit better. So I think we just need ice up centrals and then next turn we'll push out the Rashida. We could do install, install Rashida. Uh, and then we only res based off. We might lose the Rashida if they chest Stushka. I don't think they chest Stushka into unknown ice. So I think that's fine. The other option's a bit slower where we just do Hordum, a cat hedge fund that gives us three cards in hand. So if they sabotage us, it's pretty bad. So I think we push. We probably push. Yeah, let's push. So we'll do HQ, new remote server, Rashida. So obviously we can't res all of this. If we res the Hordum, it's three. If we res the Akhet, it's technically two, but the order that they fire them matters. I think we're one credit short. They res us first, it costs us two, and then we're short of this. So yeah, we're one credit short. Dirty laundry R and D. Might as well get some accesses, get a read on the deck. You have to worry about hard hitting news. I don't think we've had that many S's respected. It's kind of hard. Their economy comes and goes. It's operation based and we get away with everything here. We get a Rashida, draw through gain three and a lot of cards in hand. Malapur is nice. We want to ice up. We're worried about Banhar. We have a turn to interact with that. So I think we can get the Malapur in the remote. We can consider icing up HQ a bit better. The Akat will deal with it until maybe a Botulus. I think we just want to set up a bit this turn. The other options we can do install on top of the Hordum or behind the Hordum advance. They have to deal with a Hordum. That's possible. I'm okay leaving R&D open, honestly. I think that actually might be better. We do install and then we do, no, I think it's next turn. Here, ideally we should sprint. We should sprint first. We should have done that before installing this, but I'm pretty sure we're happy installing that. Okay, so we have next turn priority construction. Unfortunately, we can't advance the Atlas. So here we can get the wall to wall in their mode server. I think that's fine. We have to shuffle some cards back. The food is okay in our hand. It's safer there than anywhere else, honestly. Trigger light's a nice setup. We'll put the audacity back. We don't need that anytime soon. So here we can either ice up R&D. I'm okay with single accesses. Let's just get the wall to wall rolling a bit. Maybe it forces a run. And then next turn we can pry con and then push from that point on, I think. Yeah, obviously a pretty ugly turn there. I think if we didn't have the agenda there, we wouldn't open with the Malapert. So that's probably pretty sus. A light to fire coming down. SS Sabotage 2. Uh, we can do two from the deck, I think. I like our hand a fair bit. In terms of agendas in the deck, there's 11 and 33. So it's a one in three chance of hitting agenda. Sorry, nine and 33. About a one in still. Uh, trigger light's important, but not the most important. It's a win condition. Let's get rid of one of those. New loss supporting draw off the top. Okay. Nuka. They do have to light the fire, which can deal with this remote server. They still have to get through the Hordum. And if you get a border control there, it's really hard to use light the fire. Uh, that more contests like Spin Doctor stuff like that, but they still need the breakers to support it. This one's also on Simul Chip. You don't see that often. I wonder if they're on like Begamut and are using this to reinstall it or maybe even Augustina and this allows them to play a lot of uh, uh, resources or sorry, viruses. All right, let's draw it. They saw that. We'll gain a credit. We'll advance something. Are we going to push in the remote server this turn? No, I think we're going to priority construct it. So we'll advance a card. Let's advance, I guess, the Hordum. 
It only matters once it's triple advanced. This also probably means they're on Botulus. The Akad kind of matters. All right, second trick. So server one. Okay, so now we can just score this out from hand if we really want to. Let's we'll just take some money here. Uh, R&D is wide open to finality, but a lot of these decks are playing less and less finalities. They're just Chastushka's the play. They have no breakers so far, but Ghost Tongue is down. So Nuka to draw up three. Love this card. It's been really good for these sort of builds. Less efficient than Diesel in theory, but more card draw and it's safe to losing it from hand. So you can draw when and if you need it, as opposed to like just the, the turbo off of Diesel. There's the Anarch Diesel Steel Skin. There's the Marrow here. We can sabotage. So this is our last two trick of lights. Let's just two up the top. We lost a food and a spin doctor. Food is okay. A spin doctor is not that great. But we have a Malapert here, so we can always just pull back uh, whatever we need here. And I think we'll just take the counters off the Hortum. There's actually a big chance that we just do install advance because they're on six here. So this is basically an Axis and three credits. It's like a dirty laundry. A lot of times you want to do that when running the remote server or something that actually forces a bit more interaction, but a single is fine. So here we want to return it to hand. So we're going to, I think we draw a card more important. I think we gain a credit. The advancement does matter because we want to get two advancements on this so we can trick a light. And I think we just add this to HQ. Okay, so here we do server one. We can advance this once. We're on 12 credits now. I think we want to get something on R&D. Uh, in terms of breakers, they have nothing yet. Legwork was hit. That is a pretty important thing to understand, not that our HQ is in a bad spot. I think we just ice up R&D. I think the mouses will be pretty good. This server seems pretty good too. And next turn, we can trickle light this out if we really want to. We have to remember the Malapur too. Gives us a card back. Nuka to draw three. They have eight cards in hand. Raindrops on HQ. We can let this go through pretty easily. We don't want to res centrals into raindrops. So this is just dirty laundry. They see a border control. Very important to get that also onto HQ sooner than later. It's one of the unfair ways we can deal with Chastushka once they get their breakers down. We have to also remember that Light the Fire will uh, technically contest very little in this deck besides Spin Doctor. Because mind you, they can make the round the remote server. They can sabotage two, draw one, which is good. And sometimes you just want to fire it for tempo. Labor rights. You see more and more decks just playing this on tempo. They trash three, running hot, dirty laundry, bravado. We got to see which three they shuffle back in. So simul chip, interesting. Bravado. A lot of times it doesn't make a big change to the deck. And then legwork. So the legwork was the big inclusion as a card that you could play Katurga, but that's back in the deck. Mind you, there's a chance also that like the labor rights hits a steel skin and it fires when you trash off your stack, which is kind of sick. So we have to figure out whether we want to uh, trick a light here. I don't think we do. Well, we could actually. I think we could consider it a uh, trick a light, advance, advance, and then just pulling an agenda. Oh, a Malapert can't pull an agenda, right? It's a non-agenda card. So I think we pull a spin doctor. They now have a fractor and uh, MK Ultra. So I think we spend a click probably icing up HQ a bit better with the border control so we don't get Shastush good. So what do we do here? We can do advance, advance, advance. I do think we probably trick a light once. What is our scoring pattern? We want to score this 3-2. We want to pull an, uh, a hostel at some point. I think this is kind of safe. They don't have a decoder yet. So like this server seems pretty safe. Uh, Hordum with three advancements on it's a bit better. But Arquette is kind of hard to deal with. It's eight credits. I think we're safe. We can probably just like let this roll a bit. Now, while to wall in the remote server, like into a new remote server, if they like light the fire it, it's kind of a bit ugly for us, but it's not the end of the world. So I do think we advance this once. This is, we're taking some risks here. We could definitely score this. We can put this on HQ and I think we're just gonna take some more money because we're definitely gonna have to res ice this turn. And this looks like a defensive upgrade. Mind you, Light the Fire does deal with it, but uh, they're short dealing with this. I would love to triple advance this. It's just a bit expensive. Hopefully we get it next turn with the wall to wall because we can't pull an agenda with this. Oh, Botulus, that's really good. Unfortunately, what was that? It doesn't say what they're firing, but they're firing the Light the Fire, that's cool. Uh, I don't want to do two off the top. I'm going to do one off the top in that. Okay. So it is light the fire. The chat log doesn't tell you what they're firing. That's really weird. So we'll res the Aket. So they can only break one sub on this. So we'll get an advancement on the Hortum. So the Hortum is going to be disgusting when it fires. Mind you, they trash the Steel Skin Scarring, but they can't break this. Fire all. So we get an advancement. So they can continue. They understand that this could be a mouseless. They're going to continue. So this, it just fires. This is disgustingly good. It's a Hortum with three advancements. We get all our money back. Uh, let alone we get to put two cards from our deck in our hand. We reveal them, right? No, we don't even reveal them. All right, so what do we want to back? We have two clicks left. We're going to score that out. We can get hostile. I think we want to get a border control, and I think we're going to get the audacity. Uh, Spin Doctor is probably the safest bet here. We have two clicks left. The marrow is down, so we're going to have to sabotage one when we score this out. Now, this does go down for only three credits. It's not mouseless. Ooh, that's bad. 
That's pretty bad. They have to do a lot for this, though. This is still eight credits to get through. So if they think this is a defensive upgrade, which unfortunately it's not, we're going to get called here on, on this play. Because it's forward install their factor, forward to break this. We'll get a credit and advancement. Oh, no, they're letting it go. Thanks. That's huge. Again, if they go down to zero, it's still pretty scary. They get the food. Um, and here we can score out. So we're going to score this out. The question is, how hard do we score it out? We could trickle light it here and get an install so we can install the spin doctor. Uh, I don't know if we do. I think we just do double advance. I think we just double advance. Do we res the Malapert? I don't think so. Why not, though? I don't know what to do here. So, like, the advancements on both of these are relevant. Our remote server has fallen apart, but a border control fixes it because then they can res through the Hordem twice. So, I think we res the Malapert and then we do advance, advance. That'll drop us another three credits. But it's on eight. We can marrow whatever, probably the uh, cat. And then we can just put the spin doctor. Otherwise, we could spin doctor. I think we trick a light here. No, I, I, I don't think. I think we just take the advancements. So we'll res this. We'll score that. Two advances is six. Search ID for non agenda card. So what do we want in our hand here? Frycon is pretty good. Uh, hedge fund is kind of necessary, funny enough. And if we sabotage one, we'll do that. So weird. A lot of angles there. The server can be run. We have eight credits, which is enough to res a boarding control, which is important. The mouse list as well. It's nice. Uh, that's the last steel skin. So the um, what's it called gets even better for us. The face check on the mouse list is not going to give them tempo. They have a legwork somewhere. They still need three more agendas. We want to pull with this the hostel. And then we want to pull a uh, three two. I don't think we can pull the food anymore. They are camping the remote server relatively well with this. But yeah, border control will fix that. So next turn, ideally, I think we install the spin doctor hedge fund and then border control it. Clicking for credit, they're on nine. A lot of money. They're on 10, 11, just throwing out cards here. So probably breakers. Let's see if they find the decoder. They did. So they have all their breakers in the bin. So they can break all types. I think money is going to be the right limiting factor as much as they have uh, bravado likely. So here we could just pull an agenda. We can just, uh, again, I think the Hortum advancements no longer matter. Like they're just going to break all of it or break it for three credits. So we can pull an agenda, install, advance, trigger light. I think that's pretty good. I, I think that's relatively good. Uh, we can't trash anything. We could ZF the Malapert, but um, then you don't get the Malapert, so you don't want to do that. How much does it cost us? It costs us nothing. Otherwise, we could just like, again, the Chastushkas are coming. That's the thing, but we have boarding control. So the other option is we can like hedge fund and we can advance and put the spin doctor on the table. I think that's fine too. I think that's reasonable. If they run this, I think we're okay with it. And I think we're just going to advance. We want to border control on the remote server, but we're trying to win without the remote server anymore. So we'll just advance this once. It's like clicking for credit. It says it's not a border control, which is kind of rough. But I think they're setting up for Chestushka here because they, they definitely want to get their breakers down. All right. Not great. We also have to use the spin doctor here. Maybe not the best to use the spin doctor. We do get an advancement though. Uh, okay, so that sets up our cat so we can trick a light off of it if we want to. Now this said they get through two. Imagine this was a, what's it called? Uh, the thing that purges. I'm a virus. That'd be so good. So here they probably just botched us through it. Again, if it wasn't a virus, they could just install their black orchestra. So it's actually not that good. Here we'll res. We can shuffle two cards back. Again, they're not running a lot of resources. So I think we just remove this from the game. Uh, it gets back into Spin Doctor. That's super important. What else is really important? Sprint is nice. Trickle Light is nice. We have two in hand though and two Atlas counters. So it seems a bit um, unnecessary. I think we just want to do the Sprint. It gives us some flexibility. Here they can choose to trash the Malapert if they want. Okay, four credits. That's nice. And I think we just start scoring from hand here. Maybe bringing the trickle light is better than the sprint. Deuces. They can expose here. They gain three. Probably want to do expose and run, I reckon. So they don't have that many click left. It's a mouseless on R&D. So they know if they want to go through that, it's probably just light a fire. Otherwise, it's six plus your install. That's three. They don't have bad pub. We haven't scored a hostile yet. And currently, there are still seven agendas and 19 cards. Or actually six, because we have the above the law in hand. Man, the sentry slot on this deck is pretty rough. I wonder if we should just be running, uh, what's it called? Uh, Ballista. I don't think so. Maybe even just having a, like a stop guy that hits in some of the matchups. We're only been playing against Anarchs though, all today. Like we played, I think seven or eight games, only Anarch. Checking archives here, that's one sabotage from hand. I just don't think they wanted to face check into any of this ice. And just credit there, okay, 11 credits. All right, now the spin doctor, that's good. We're just gonna score out. Server one, advance first, trigger light. So we do target, source. And then the advancements on this one doesn't matter because they're just going to score it out. So this doesn't do anything. Uh, we have to sabotage one. I guess we'll get rid of that. 
And from here, we basically want to score, pull a hostile and score it next turn. And then from there, just win off of Audacity. So they have two turns to win or to disrupt us that we don't win. And from hand, we can trash the boarding control. It actually was definitely better to put the trickle light back because we always can sabotage this trickle light and feel okay about it. Not great, but okay. Oh, they trash liberates. It's a finality. Okay. Uh, trash two from the top of the deck. This is scary. I think we're going to just do the boarding control and one off the top of the deck and they're going to see four. So that is our last spin doctor in hand. We'll res the mouseless just to do some amount of damage, but this is the finality. Installing the black orchestra here is really difficult because if they want to break it, it's six and then they can't trash any cards. Three. Yeah, I think you just let this fire. So we get one subroutine off. So we get a credit. Okay, here I think we actually do use one Alice token to pull the hostile to hand because I don't think they're running HQ this turn. But we want at least one hostile. Uh, they're going to see four cards here. We could also pull, in theory, another 3-2 agenda and just hold it in hand behind Border Control a cat. I think that's actually fine, too. I think we just use all the counters here. So we'll just go pull the, uh, I don't know. They're all the same. So now there's way fewer agendas, and we're behind two barriers. And this barrier is really hard to deal with. Again, they can't trash anything, but they saw nothing there. Mind you, there's two fewer agendas in the deck. Credit, credit. Okay. So they have three credits. They know we have two agendas in hand because we showed them. I think we're going to do the non-bad publicity one first. So we'll do server one, advance, trick, source, target, two, score. We have to sabotage one. Uh, we'll do top of the deck because we know it's not an agenda because they dug deep. It could have been a trashable. But now they have to steal this hostile or they win. We could have left one hostile in the deck, but I'm pretty sure border control and cat we can hold on. Sabotage 2, we know that there's at least two cards off the top of R&D, or one card is not an agenda, so this seems totally safe. It was a running hot, so they have six clicks to get into HQ. Uh, the cat is one advancement short of being, like, really good. It would be really good if it was good. But they have to get this one from HQ. The top of R&D is unknown here. Drawing up five clicks left. Mind you, they played a running hot, so they took the core damage, gained two extra clicks because they played one for it, and they drew a card. So they're on three hand size. doesn't matter. Mind you, you do have to watch out in theory, like Wayland decks could be trying to hurt you. We're just trying to fast advance. And we have a next turn if they can't stop this hostile. Our games are pretty fast and they seem to be relatively consistent, which is good. And Essa is tricky. Oh, nice. That's a botulist there. That's going to stop. Not too much. Again, this only costs one to break, but the biggest problem here is they don't have their factor yet. These were mostly known. Uh, I think there's only one unknown card there because we trashed uh, the cards they saw in R&D. Mind you, there's a lot of cards in R&D left. Ooh, simul chip. That means they can get in here. They only have one click left, so border control. They have to trash something to move something. And that means they can't get through this twice. They actually can't make a successful run here, I don't think. Because there's a border control here. So they can simul chip to trash a botulist to move a tra botulist because no installed program has been trashed this turn. I don't think. What do they lose to? Yeah, I think if they trash a program from hand. And then unfortunately, if they, they're just short. They're short uh, five credits. Because now they have to let one of the border control fire. That's totally fine. Okay, so we get two credits. Then we can res this. Again, we only need to keep one credit to score out. And now they have to break this once, and then we end the run with border control, and then they can't come back. So just two barriers here is just good enough. So we get credit, choose installed card to advance, doesn't matter. Now it's a one and four here, but we don't have to take those odds. We'll just end the run with border control, which you can do at instant speed. And they have one click left and no money. The best they can do is run R&D here. But we have the hostile in hand, which we pulled. They know it. Install advance, gain two, advance, score takes us to seven. Camaro for one. Good game. That was tight. Yeah, we've been seeing so much Esther today. Again, I can show you the, the, the log. It's all Anarch uh, sabotage here. One doesn't matter. But yeah, actually, in theory, we could have scored on zero credits. We could just draw, install Audacity. We could do whatever we want there. Thanks for the game. But this deck will go fast, and fast is one of the things that you want to do against Essa. We do, are, we're not the best at protecting our central servers. Admittedly, like, uh, Chastushka wasn't on the table, and we had the border control for that. Finality did land, and we were allowed to remove two agendas. But currently here, like, in the deck, there's four agendas and 10 cards, so the density on R&D is actually like pretty high, as much as they have to steal three of the four agendas left in there. Yeah, I'm not joking. This is today. Anarch, Essa, Hoshiko, Hoshiko, Essa, Essa, Hoshiko, Essa. Uh, it's been wild. This has been pretty wild. <laughs> Game number eight. Uh, we played, I think, four Hoshikos, four Essa today. All right, I guess we're playing more Essa. We could probably build a deck that's like really good into Essa, uh, considering how like homogenous JNet seems to be right now. All right, so playing against Essa, that's important. We can focus on that in this video. We have a Prycon for an Aket. We stick a wall to wall behind it. That's okay. 
but we keep our HQ open, which is pretty bad because uh, we can get Chastushka turned one. We don't want to do that. I'd rather Aket HQ. Again, the finality is on a lot of the lists online. There's only one of them, so we can let that ride, but we just don't want to get Chastushka. Four sabotage on a single card is a lot. So I think we're going to do that. We have sprint for options. If we draw into another piece of ice, we can always just like hedge fund uh, ice up HQ if we don't want to pry con it next turn. Sticking the wall to wall is going to be pretty good. Getting free card draws is just really nice because it gives you extra cards you can sabotage to Essa. Take that Anson Rose. Spin Doctor, very good in our hand too. So let's see how we play this. Again, Essa, we don't want to get the pressure off HQ. I think here it probably is fine to sprint, but I actually like most of our hand. So it's hard to figure out what we sprint into is going to be worse than this. So if anything, I think we can just put wall to wall on the table uniced. If they trash it for three on turn one, it's kind of hard for them to do. And it'll slow them down if they have to check that instead of setting up. And we can do hedge fund cat on HQ and are very likely to draw into a piece of ice that Prycon will connect with. Our best case in this deck is either another cat, but actually um, Mouseless is kind of sick because it's not that bad into Banhar. They're on 46 cards. OK, so let's do that play again. Just don't get just douche good. And with a spin doctor in hand, depending on when in the turn if they do sabotage, we can always just like go off the top of the deck and fix it with spin if we really think it's necessary. Did went keep. Oh, there's the banner. Went kept. OK, so they have Nuka, they have banner. So we have to worry about Chastushka if we only have, you know, two cards in hand. This is, again, sabotage last click, which I think, again, you want to get these cards down on the table. So it makes some sense. Uh, Black Orchestra is in the bin. We have to sabotage two. I think we can do off the top of the deck. No problem. We lost uh, Rashida and Hedge Fund. OK, so. Uh, we're going to want to get another ice on HQ so they can't just go with Banhar. So it's going to force us to do something unless we can push in the remote server. We'll draw a card for sure. That's nice. Uh, gain a credit, place an advancement. Those are all the relevant ones. Getting advancement on the Aket is okay. From here, what do we want to do? I think we want to sprint for ice. I do think we want to sprint for ice. Because the Banhar definitely is going to hit HQ. They don't really have the money to trash the wall. Oh, that's kind of more ice than we would need. So boarding control is so good into uh, any of their pressure. We have a mouse list for a uh, prior con next turn. I think this turn they could consider just two us. So I do think we're going to put the border control on HQ and then last click. I think we're just going to ice up with the wall to wall. No, that doesn't work. This is mind you is a double, which actually makes things a bit trickier where you want to generally do that and then install advance. And it's hard. So we'll get rid of one of those. The Rashida it feels weird to shuffle it back, but I think we want to score the Atlas sooner than they can set up. So we have two clicks left here. We want to get the boarding control here and we want to keep this in hand. So I think we draw ones. Uh, I have some regrets. Now, admittedly, actually, we probably wanted to keep the second mouse list because if we want to not get ruined by Banhar, we're going to have to do two. Right, two ice in a row. We'll put this one on the innermost because this does end the run when it's triple advanced. The text on the mouse list is exceedingly irrelevant. A lot of people don't triple advance this and it's really hard to. It's really expensive. And this is one of the cool cards that makes it pretty sweet as much as a double can be a bit awkward on faster games. All right, just hey, click for three. They have a, a MK Ultra that doesn't really matter against our deck. And we technically now have the ability to uh, trick a light because that cat will have two. We'll draw first, gain a credit, uh, advance. We don't have to return it to hand because we can just ice up a new server. And I think we will. So there are four credits. They don't have a lot of money so far. Let's just get this into a new remote server. We could consider icing this up. I don't think we need to. I think they're fine if they trash it. We're totally fine. And here we can install another card in front of it. Our turn next turn is install, install advance. So I think we can just click for a credit here. In theory, we could just advance something, but technically it has to be a card that has no advancements on it. So clicking for credit is just as good. And then next turn, we'll try and pop off here. But we just want to make sure that we have the requisite like seven credits to make sure we don't get just douche guide. You see Banhar on HQ. Sure, Gamble. Okay, they're back in the money. In terms of the breakers, it's expensive to get through mouse list. It's like nine. Uh, this we let through, unfortunately. Banhar is the outermost or the first? The first. So this is interesting. So if we res the uh, cats, it won't fire. If we res this, they'll know what it is. But then we give them two card draw. We get this up for two credits, though, which is pretty good. I think we'll do it. I don't love resing in two, but we have two cards. We have three cards in HQ that we care that they hit. So I am going to res this. Again, it's not great to res on centrals into raindrops. Like, it's hard to make this card relevant on centrals. But um, yeah, we do really care about that. And it's two. Oh, it doesn't end the run. <laughs> Forgot about that. That's fine. OK, we hit a labor rates and a steel skin, so pretty bad. They can continue here. This I'm OK with. If they want to continue, we'll get our cat up and that will triple advance it, which is sick. So that's an a cat. They don't have a paperclip, so that will fire. So it's now triple advance, which is really hard for them. They drew four cards, though, which is disgusting. So we made some mistakes there. Oh, running hot. That's nice. So we're going to throw out, I think, these two. Oh, we do one from the top of the deck. Yeah, that's fine. An a cat and a wall to wall. They really need to trash this. They have the credits to do it this turn. Deuces. 
draw three, or sorry, gain three. They expose this as a mouseless, so I think they're going to take down the wall-to-wall -wall or go for single R&D. I think taking the wall-to-wall -wall down is way more important. Okay, well, maybe they do all of it. I don't think they want to draw here. Yeah, now they're going to go for it. They're not? Wait, don't they know what this is? Wait, what happened? Oh, they trashed a spin doctor. Okay, sorry. I was looking at the face down cards. Yeah, that's why they went back. They're still not trashing this. Again, I would love to score the wall to wall. We would trickle light it out, but we're getting value from our uh, our wall to wall here. This is just free card draw. Um, I think you want to deal with this when they have 14 credits. Once your stooge go down, again, the border control does do that. Draw card, gain credit, advancement. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I guess we we're more likely to take them off this. So unfortunately, they have 14 credits and they have access to not all their breakers. So we have to spend eight credits. Right now, we have a huge hole in terms of economy. We just don't have money. So we can put Spin Doctor in server two, and if they run it, they run it. I think that's kind of fine. If we ban her R&D, they could go through it, but we can't really afford to res anything. I think we have to force them to ban her through the mouseless. We have two Spin Doctors, so we can be a bit faster and looser, but we need a top deck of hedge fund soon, or a hostile. But with R&D open, I don't think that's gonna happen anytime quickly. The cool thing with the Spin Doctor on the table protected, mind you, Banhar is here, so we can trade four credits for three net damage. Uh, yeah, so like we can take Sabotage pretty aggressively. We can trash the wall-to-wall -wall for sure. Sure gamble for click for five. Another one. Okay, let's do one and one. All right, there's an Atlas in there. They have three more clicks. So much value from Essa. Now they're running it. Okay, this is three net damage in theory. There's not a lot of Wayland dice you expect that has five, but in theory, if this was an envelopment, they don't have a steel skin scarring in hand. This is lethal. Now, if we res this, we're going to go down to two credits, which means barring the hostile takeover, there's no economy play that, uh, that is, we can recover from here. So this is actually pretty ugly because we can't even hedge fund. So fire, that'll be three net damage they lost. Steel skin, a marrow, and a creative. So they were safe into envelopment there. Uh, they have 19 credits, so the spin doctor is going to be contested. Okay, so we will use the spin doctor. We're going to shuffle back a spin doctor for sure. And I think we just need to get money back. Uh, the agenda seems important. We have a lot of cards in hand. Top of the deck. Please, no hostile. We need a hostile. And you know, Veritas is just good enough against Essa. Three subroutines. They can't choose to let them fire. I can't believe they didn't trash this. Again, we are milling ourselves, but we just need the value from this. Draw one. Uh, that's a bit too much, but we just get a card in front of something. It's fine. Okay. So we have Prycon, so we can get triple mouseless in a row. They have the money to deal with it, but not consistently. I think we have to ice up R&D. Yeah, this might be actually a bit too much. We might not have wanted to draw off the wall-to-wall. -wall. So here we can Prycon. We'll be down to not a lot of money. But we have a server there. Again, they have all the breakers, I think. No paper clips so far. This couldn't be much besides an ice wall. We only have one credit and they just happily go through it. Laborites got fired. They trashed a running con, just got into raindrops and they shuffered back in a nuka and two laborites. So just going for the long value. Again, we just need to close out. We just have way too little money. There's a marrow. Uh, we can do uh, two off the top. Yes. We can start scoring out at some point. They're just installing it. This is the worst part is we just don't have money. So they're not respecting us. They're finally trashing this. I think this thing was so important to go a long time ago. It's giving us almost all our economy. All right, another spin doctor, not great. So we can't advance any of these cards to gain credits. It's like clicking for credit, obviously. Uh, so I think we put this in server two and click for two credits. Again, we can always fast advance this out for like, what is it? Install, advance, so we gain two. Yeah, for free. But just getting a blank atlas doesn't really do much. There isn't a ZF in the deck. If they ever go down to low hand size and we top deck it, we can win. But we'll see here where they put the Banhar. No server is the choice. So we just need to spend, make them spend money. So that's why I want to put stuff in remote server. We just need to make them play our game. Because our ice is relatively good. It's just we'd have no economy, so they can go a bit slow here. All right, the very Veritas, they can break it for five, uh, seven with the breaker. I think we have to res this. The subroutines on this, like, you can actually just let them fire. The tagged is not very relevant into this deck. You do want to protect your Banhar. But otherwise, yeah, install and break. We're forcing them to spend money again. It's been turns before. We, that's why, why Essa seems like there's so much money is that we don't do a good job forcing money out of the runner's hands, right? Like if all they have is Banhar and they're just playing events. We're not forcing any credits. Like let one of these fire. The question is which one? Technically, it's just cheaper to lose two than it is to break three. Let alone you can do the trace. So they just lose two. So yeah. Oh, Corp gains two. Oh, sick. I didn't think they'd do that. Giving us two when we're on zero is huge. Because now we actually can install advance. Okay, 13 credits. Trash Rashida, that is so good. Admittedly bad publicity, sure. But that is exactly what we needed to have some sort of economy here. 
So install gain two. That's like that's the difference between us gaining two and not gaining two was how powerful uh, those credits were. Otherwise, we could not score this out without like install credit tricolite, which is ridiculous. We don't even get our ability. Oh, random. It's Rashida. Only 16 cards left in R&D, mind you. So we have to just start fast advancing out here. And they're on all the labor rights still. So they're going to be able to like go the long game and just like sabotage over and over again. You can even just install ghost tongues over and over again. It's going to do enough damage. We had a spin doctor in the remote server. They might have to be a bit concerned about that. Nuka. Good. Okay. I do think we just fast advance out here. Oh. And life gives you lemons. So in theory, we can do install trick trick. It costs us two credits. We go down to seven and we can get a token on it. Uh, that's pretty good. Otherwise, we can do install advanced trick. That's probably just good enough. Yeah, right. Uh, we can take them off of the uh, this mouseless. Again, I don't think it's going to matter that much if they banner it. Maybe they don't. And it's nice. We actually could consider trick trick because we have the spin doctor still on the table. And I think that's probably more likely how we win this game here. Let's do it with the second one. I don't think we need to. Unfortunately, oh. Yeah, we probably wanted to do that. I think that's a fair bit better. Marrow, whatever. Because in Blank Atlas, it's like really not much. Banhar, R&D. Again, that's three net damage. So we're totally fine with that. Again, they can break in and just take one net damage. So is a one net damage worth two credits? Yeah, with seven cards and then maybe it feels like it. Paperclip's out for core damage. We'll just trash two. Again, we have a spin doctor. This is a finality. There is a lot of cards in the deck here. We could easily lose to this run. We just haven't done enough to push on the table. Okay. Um, for three. This is going to see four cards. We could spin Doctor preemptively here. They take a net damage. They lost the legwork. We're actually kind of happy to see that. So here, this is the finale, which they can just shuffle back in with labor rights. What else do they have? How many labor rights are left? All of them. And they have a paperclip now. They have nine credits. So the question is whether we res the spin Doctor. I think we do. Okay. Unfortunately, they wouldn't have seen two agendas there. So what do we want to shuffle back? I think trick light. I think sprint. But I think it's pretty bad for us. There's a lot of agendas in 12 cards. What? They might be thinking we're flooded and we're not. We're honestly not. But they saw four cards here, saw nothing. And I think here we do install Alice trick trick. And that puts us on game point. Archive just to gain three credits. Again, if you're going to discard cards, you have to get them out of hand. Oh, there's a hostile in there. I totally forgot about that. But yeah, we didn't want to shuffle that back in. So now they have to win on two axes. Okay. We know the top of the deck isn't going to win it. So we just do server two and we do trick trick. The other option is that we hold the second trick light. But I think the Alice token is much more useful. Otherwise, if we want to advance it, we should have advanced it first. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, they say order, which is not wrong. I don't, I don't know. I think, do we want this with a counter? I think we do want this with a counter because we need to break our ND lock and just hope we draw into the audacity. No order. Yeah, order is fine there. Technically, you want to do in the other order. So we just have to hope the top card that they saw, which we, we know is not an agenda, isn't the audacity. So we're going to rip the top of the deck. It wasn't a dance seat. It was a trick light, though. Equally bad. <laughs> Equally bad. If we just went from HQ, we would have won that turn. Oh, I forgot there was one more trick light there. So it was actually like a 2 and 11 for that to be really quite bad. So now they're going to do multiple Chistushkas in a turn. Um, that's okay. We're going to make them spend credits there. But if we just let it go, uh, we'd be fine. If, if we just sabotage from hand. So Paperclip has to come down here. Mind you, they could just take 2 net damage. They're going to. So they lost a Nuka and a Paperclip. This, mind you, costs four and we get an advancement, which is good because it turns on trickle light on a different server. And then we're going to get Chistushkit again. I do think we know also the top next uh, two cards are safe, so we can use that. Keep that in mind. So we fire because it can't break both of these. So we'll put the advancement there. Continue to move. We have to uh, end the run here largely. Again, this is still just a, such a good ice. Uh, labor rights, dirty laundry, dirty laundry deuces. So they're just going to bring back the Chistushkas and try to end the game. They can get a Chistushka off here. Actually, no, they're short credits. Oh man, if we just have touch from hand, we would have had it here. We would just install advance. Now, if we top deck an audacity, we're fine. If we top deck a 3-2 agenda, we're fine, but I don't think we're going to. That doesn't do much. So we have to force them to have breakers. Unfortunately, we have to just get the Hordem here so they can't. Okay, I'm going to advance this. We can play the hedge fund. We don't have the audacity, so we just have to advance this. What do they shuffle back? 
Legwork Shistushka Shistushka. I'm surprised. I thought they would definitely go here for uh, what's it called? Um, uh, the finality. So I'm just going to advance this because it's akin to clicking for a credit. It shows them it's not a border control, though. I think that's actually wrong. I think we should just click for credit and let them worry that this is a border control. But I'd actually like them to just do a legwork here. And they probably have one of them in hand. I think by definition, they have to. So Banhar is on HQ. So this card just exists to be rezzed. Uh, so they take two net damage. Mind you, they can't do that forever. The top of R&D, I think, is unknown because they saw four. Did they trash one? We trashed one. We drew one. We drew one. Laborates, Trash Marrow, and Shastushka. So I think they put the Finality back here and we lose to that. Finality, Deuces, Deuces. Okay, so they, has, they have a one in three chance of having Finality in hand. One in three. Deuces, mind you, they can definitely get Finality. They can just draw the rest of their deck. And if that's the case, uh, we have to Atlas for... Oh, man. If, uh, we can still do it because we just like Spin Doctor back and shuffle into Tricolites. There's a legwork. This is totally fine. We have to res the Hortum here. Money shouldn't be an issue considering with Audacity costs us... Uh, like, it's one credit to, to fire everything. So here they lose two cards. They lost a the finality. So they drew the finality one and three, and they just lost to the net damage. So this legwork here looks really good. They use all their money on the Aket. Whoa, this is going to be close. <laughs> this is going to be close. Okay. Uh, advancing, in theory, that makes the most sense. Legwork here, full whiffs, and they have no money. They can just send it through the Veritas. I'm pretty sure we're tracking. We know the top card of R&D. I forgot if they trashed one when they win finality. Or no, they stole one. So this is unknown. But they could just rip, rip. Okay, one unknown card here. So they have one click left here, and it's very likely we can close the game. Fire all. Okay. They have a tag. Okay. Thinking. We have to think this through. So this is an unknown card. We have an Atlas token here. We're going to be able to see four cards, Atlas token, Spin Doctor, Mandatory Draw. So in theory, we're more scared of them stealing a 3-2 agenda. There's two more in the deck, though. So I think we're okay with that. I don't think we have to use a Spin Doctor here. I think we use the Spin Doctor after they access. Nothing. Okay, so we need a fast advance piece. That's all we need. So we'll res the Spin Doctor. We don't have a fast advance piece, but we have an Audacity in the list, so we're totally fine here. We have an Audacity in the list, right? Otherwise, we should have shuffled that back in. Yeah, we do. So we do new remote server, advance, use this token, pull the Audacity, throw our whole hand, Essa can go get the agendas. What a game. <laughs> wild game. That was wild. Uh, they have so much pressure. As soon as we got our ice up and we forced them to spend credits, mind you, uh, Banhar gets around a lot of that. It does get scary. Four cards left, though. And this is turn 11. Like, we're down to four cards on turn 11, which is pretty wild. Mind you, we are on a 44 card deck, so uh, the sabotage is going to connect. But we were just lucky enough not to flood. We got around the legwork. We had the agendas in hand. I do think we definitely made some small misplays there. Uh, I think in theory we had lethal there too on the uh, ZF, which is good fun. We have to keep that in mind to remember that if the runner ever has one card in hand and we have the combo, if we just have an atlas and one piece, we can get there. Yeah, there's no clot right now. That's like a big reason why I just play fast advance. But if you want to close the game out as soon as you can against Essa decks, like fast advance like this is really good. And again, today we've only played against Anarch. It's just been Essa nonstop in Hoshiko and uh, it can still be hard. It's still, mind you, I think Essa is a difficult deck to pilot. So like your results may vary on both sides of the table. But um, I, I think we have some legs here as much as like it's sometimes hard to keep cards in hand. That's wild. Hey, thanks. You too. And that's this last. I think we're going to end it there. I think this is actually a really good list for like casual play. It teaches you good fundamentals. You need to keep to your outs. I do think we miss some lethals on some turns, and I think that's the sort of thing that we improve the more we play. But if you're running into all this S and all this Anarch, I don't think this is a bad choice whatsoever, as much as I think the economy. I think there's some small tweaks you can definitely make this list to make it uh, sing a bit better. Thanks so much for watching. There's just like this singularity point that's very easily observed that over enough period of time, I'll just end up playing a Whale and Fast Advance deck. <laughs> it's still good. <laughs> Trick Lights have been around forever. It's still good enough. Poor poor Anson Rose. I'm hoping that this is a very approachable entry point into the standard format. I think standard is really cool. There's a lot of really fantastic cards in there that allow for some very interesting board states, some really high level decision making. And I, I think as simple as Tricolite fast events can be, you can have some really exciting games and feel like, you know, you're really putting the pedal to the metal. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Huge thank you to all these names here. Again, these are just some of the patrons that help support this channel so I can put the time into recording these intros that are just getting longer and longer and longer. Apologies for that. Hopefully that helps. I got to do something about that, I reckon. 
Otherwise, if you're getting to the standard again, right now, there's gonna be a big rotation just this summer in the standard format. So it's hard to say what standard's gonna look like in just a couple months. Maybe you're getting ready for nationals, but it's probably gonna be way different out there. But hey, at least you'll still have border control. And with that, hopefully we'll be recording some more deck dives for next week, but otherwise, of course, we stream on Thursdays. We'd love for y'all to drop by. Enjoy standard. Take care. Breakdown.